okay. uh, government in New Hampshire that where you live ain't going away in your lifetime. Sorry to have to tell you that. So well, not with that attitude. That you're got like twenty thousand people max. Uh, that's statistically insignificant, even in a. In a uh, New Hampshire is like my county. If my the county I live in is bigger than New Hampshire population wise. The number of politicians I mean, in New Hampshire is statistically insignificant. But we'll have to end it there. That's all the time we have for this episode of Peace News. Hey, James, feel free to stick around. Maybe we'll do a quick bonus show, so don't hang up. This has been our episode. You can catch us at peacenewsnow.com. All week we've got blog posts going up of DUI checkpoints and other stories of peaceful resistance. In the meantime, we'll catch you Tuesday. Coming up a little later, the 10 best careers for someone at your level of attractiveness. Oh, but right now we have something truly incredible for you. Kenneth Quinn is a real-life psychic medium who claims that he can communicate with dead acquaintances. He's written a new book. It's called Small Talk from Beyond, Speaking with Distant Relatives and Friends of Friends Who Have Passed. Hi, Kenneth. Good to see you. Now, Thank Kenneth, you. you've written that you're able to connect people with the spirits of their old college professors or roommates that they didn't really know that well. When did you realize that you had this gift? Well, it was the day after my cousin's friend's wife's funeral. I was at home and I suddenly felt a presence in the room with me. And I heard a voice say, it's Vicky. Vicky Solchek, Dale's wife. Wow. We made a Tim's birthday thing a while back and we talked about how hard it is having a cat. Fascinating. This has been so amazing. This has <laughs> been fabulous. Thank you, Kenneth Quinn, for being our guest. Stay with us because coming up next, we're gonna show you how to lose some of that excessive weight by constantly picking at your skin. This is the Onion News Network. Imagine someone in your community getting in their car, turning on the radio, and hearing the Liberty Radio Network. You can make that vision a reality with your own micro radio station. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how you can put our programs on the air in your area. You can have lrn.fm running around the clock, and you can even add in your own local shows. Building a radio station is simple, but programming isn't. That's where lrn.fm comes in. Learn more at broadcast.lrn.fm. That's broadcast.lrn.fm. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. You're listening to the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, July 27th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.73 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,308 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $596. Reuters reports a federal judge on Saturday overturned Washington, D.C.'s ban on carrying handguns outside of the home, saying it was unconstitutional. Judge Frederick Scullin wrote in his opinion, There is no longer any basis on which the court can conclude that the District of Columbia's total ban on the public carrying of ready-to-use handguns outside of the home is constitutional under any level of scrutiny. He added, Therefore, the court finds that the District of Columbia's complete ban on carrying of handguns guns in public is unconstitutional. The court ordered the city to allow residents to carry handguns outside of their homes and to let non-residents carry them as well. Scullin made the ruling in the case of Palmer et al. v. District of Columbia et al., which had been dragging on for five years. In 2008, the Supreme Court struck down D.C.'s all-out ban on handguns on the basis that it violated the right to bear arms, supposedly guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution's Second Amendment. An appeals court in 20 11 required handguns to be registered. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. 
Antiwar.com reports Israel extended its particular ceasefire in the Gaza Strip, continuing their ground invasion of the tiny Palestinian enclave, but somewhat limiting the number of air and artillery strikes against civilian areas for an additional 24 hours. Hamas has rejected the unilateral extension, however, saying they did not agree to any such extensions of the pause and saying that no ceasefire would be valid without a withdrawal of invasion forces and allowing civilians to return to their homes. What, if anything, the rejection means remains unclear, but it will likely not be welcomed in Gaza, as even though the partial pause isn't stopping the attacks on civilians, it is giving them a brief opportunity to look for food and water. Ultimately, Hamas says they don't want brief pauses, but a settlement of the war that ends years of Israeli blockade. That is certainly an ideal goal, but in the interim, it is primarily Gaza civilians, not Hamas, which is taking the brunt of the fighting. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit GoFundMe.com FPPCC. That's GoFundMe.com FPPCC. USA Today reports, a top aide for President Obama said it's possible that Obama could be impeached by the Republican-controlled House of Representatives. House Speaker John Boehner's decision to proceed with a lawsuit against the president has opened the door to the third presidential impeachment in the nation's history, according to senior advisor Dan Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer told reporters at a Friday breakfast sponsored by the Christian Science Monitor, impeachment is a very serious thing that has been bandied about by the recent Republican vice presidential nominee and others in very uncertain serious ways. We take it very seriously, and I don't think it would be a good thing. Pfeiffer was quick to add that no one has alleged anything that is even six universes from what is generally considered to be an impeachable offense. A CNN ORC poll released on Friday shows that 35% of Americans favor impeachment, which is about the same support for efforts to impeach President Bill Clinton and George W. Bush. Pfeiffer noted that a majority of Republicans, 57%, favored impeaching Obama. Impeachment is the bringing of charges against a president or federal judge by the House of Representatives. A president or judge can only be removed after a trial on those charges by the Senate. Speaker of the House John Boehner has chosen a less dramatic approach with a plan to sue Obama over his decision to delay enforcement of a provision in the Affordable Care Act requiring employers to provide health insurance. That plan passed the House Rules Committee on Thursday, clearing the way for a vote on the House floor. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On May 6, 1937, the explosion of the German passenger ship Hindenburg brought cheer to an entire generation of Americans in the midst of the Great Depression. The souls of the American people were fleetingly revitalized by the flame-engulfed Zeppelin and the shrill screams of burning passengers leaping to their heartwarming deaths. Oh my, it's burst into flames. The burning embers and charred flesh are cascading splendidly onto the mooring mast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most terrific thing I've ever seen. Oh, the luminosity, the gaiety. And on May 7th, 2000, Vladimir Putin became president of Russia after promising citizens he could bend anything they gave him with just his bare hands. And that was what happened this week in history. In the words of the Italian philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli, whoever wants to foresee the future must first look at the past and then imagine all that old stuff looking more futury and space-like. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. Yes, we are live on Sunday night. I know that's kind of unusual in the world of radio, but here we are doing a show for you. Not only that, it's a show where you can call in and take control of the airwaves, talk about anything that's on your mind. So we are definitely different than other talk radio shows out there. That's why we call the show Free Talk Live. And the number to call if you want to bring up something that is on your mind tonight is 855 450 3733. You can also call us on Skype. 
Our Skype name is LRN.FM. And of course, the phone lines here at Free Talk Live are brought to you by ProXPN. And uh, with you tonight, it's me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. And I think we're going to start off with uh, a story that, I, you know, this is an issue that kind of ruffles people's feathers. Like people tend to have strong opinions on this one way or another. Um, often it's backed by personal experience. Like if you've worked at a restaurant, you may have a, a personal experience that uh, colors your opinion on this. And it's about tipping. Now, a restaurant has abolished tipping in favor of a, a different kind of policy, but we were actually, Brian and I were out to dinner before this show, before we came here to the studio, and we were talking about the history of tipping, and you said, Brian, that it started during alcohol prohibition in, in the U.S., and the U.S. is really, of course, the only one of the only places in the world that really has this kind of socially enforced tipping, right? Yeah, I mean, for the record, we we did tip very well, uh, the people there. And yeah, so I'm we- not one of those... I question tipping, but I still leave a tip. Yeah, but I'm just saying that we took care of the servants who kindly waited at our feet um, at the... (laughs) Anyway, uh, yeah, the, the, the history of tipping, it actually starts, I mean, a lot earlier than that. The actual history of it starts in Tudor, England. So, you know, 17th century, uh, that that area. But it was at that time, you explicitly knew what it was about. You were tipping a servant. You know, you, you were tipping somebody menial. And it's interesting, tipping... Well, the king and queen would often go out and, you know, tutor England and just hand out money to poor people, too. Sure. So, I mean, yeah, you alms. know, this, this is what's going on. Right. Uh, and it's actually, it's pretty interesting because the idea of tipping in the United States, especially in relation to what it really meant as far as royalty goes, uh, was anathema in the U.S. Like, this was not... This is not how you did things in the United States was tipping. And and I mean forceful tipping. You know, you can, or, or uh, culturally enforced tipping. Because obviously, you can go ahead and tip somebody if they do a really good job for you. There's nothing wrong with that. But the idea that it was like part of the person's wage or that it was just expected and you weren't going to get away from that waiter if you didn't tip them, uh, that was really bad news in this country. In fact, there's a, there's a great quote uh, from William Scott, who uh, was a, was an author in the early 20th century. I've, I pulled it up here. Uh, it's unless a waiter, unless a waiter can be a gentleman, democracy is a failure. If any form of service is menial, democracy is a failure. Those Americans who dislike self-respect in servants are undesirable citizens. They belong in an aristocracy. Mm. And so he's, and, and this is absolutely in direct reference to you know, I mean, he says it right there, a waiter. Uh, the whole idea, again, it was just, it was absolute anathema. And then what happened was... So the idea is that it creates a power dynamic where it's the waiter is having to do things that are kind of undignified in order to just get what should be their wage. Right. I don't really see that. I mean, in in, in application, I can I can understand this person, uh, you know, talking about their impressions of monarchy and, and autocracy. I, I get that, but um, and this is probably a quote from a hundred years ago. Oh, it is. Yeah. It, almost exactly. But I mean, I don't see today too many servers uh, uh, of the you know. I mean, like I don't see them scraping and bowing to get their uh, you know three or four bucks that I'm going to give them. I don't know. I. Because the other the other aspect of that, and I, I want actually I wouldn't mind talking a little bit more about the history of it, but the other aspect of it is that I mean, isn't restaurant work seen as low rent in this country? Yeah, I, I think I mean, so. Yes, there's there's very nice restaurants in New York City and wherever else where it's certainly not that way. But by and large, if your daughter brings home a guy that says he's a cook. You're generally not going to think too highly of them. Well, I think that uh, these the days, if, if, a, if your daughter brings home service, or, or right? a waiter, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know there's there's cases where it's not true, but in general, I think that these days, if if your daughter brings home somebody with a job, you're probably pretty happy about it. And if, <laughs> and if they bring home a waiter or a bartender, you're probably, oh yeah, where'd you go to college? Um, I mean, yeah. you, know, like, you know, things are changing yeah. out there in America. I would agree that most people don't consider uh, restaurant work to be the pinnacle of employment. And the most, mostly that's because of what people make when they do it. There's a lot of competition in restaurant work, and that's going to drive down pricing. If I have the option of getting a burger you know, in one place or another, if one of the places is $25 and another place it's 7 I'm probably most of the time going to pick the $7 burger and not the $25 burger, and that's going to affect the employees at that establishment. 
Sure. So, well, and the history of this getting started in America comes from the temperance movement. It comes from prohibition. Because what happened was is the, and I'll, I'll post a, an article about all this on uh, facebook.freetalklive.com. Um, what happened was is that the alcohol sales went down at every restaurant you went to. And so suddenly the, you know, the restaurant owners. They didn't just were, go down, they went away, right? Yeah, they went away. Mm-hmm. Completely, because it was illegal. And so the restaurant owners started actively encouraging people to start tipping. And then it gets worse, because then you get the Fair Labor Standards Act, okay, later on in 1938. This is long after, uh, obviously, 1938. When did, when did Prohibition end? I don't know. 20, but it was early, maybe... Um, early yeah. 20s. Okay, early 20s? Gotcha. Okay, yeah, I, I think. Anyway, uh, and so you had that, which that's what set up what we know of as the minimum wage. Okay, that's where this comes from in 1938. But then what happens is in 1966, suddenly that law changes. And if you were a restaurant worker, you were able to get 50 per, you were able to get paid 50% lower than the federal uh, minimum wage. I would say it's significantly lower than that now. Sure, sure. Uh, it might be actually. I think it's like sixty percent lower. You know, now that you don't ha- that you don't have to make that. So now this isn't some kind of crazy argument. Uh, you know, for for minimum wage laws or anything like that. But the point is, is that in America, there's plenty of writings where the idea of subsisting off of tips was antithetical to the American ideal, Mm -hmm. to the very form, like William Scott said, to the very form of government that this country has. It's not democracy if there's tipping, okay? Yeah, and it's uh, you hear people defend tipping as, uh, it's capitalism, right? It's like if you do a good job, if you work hard, then you get a better tip, right? Right, I mean, that would be going to be my response right there. So, you know, like, I'm going to hire the plumber who comes to my house and not just does a good job, but is the most pleasant to deal with and, you know, a variety of other things. I mean, you know, it's, I'm going to ask him to come back. I worked in a restaurant. I got tips. I was a waiter. And there were waitresses that had regulars who specifically wanted to sit in their section and be served by that waitress or waiter. I don't remember a waiter having that uh, situation, but I remember one waitress (laughs) specifically. That was the the case. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure they tipped well. I have no clue. Well, you know, it's it's actually very arbitrary. I mean, you yes, could, it's it seems like it should be that way where like if a server works hard or satisfies the customer, provides a good service, they're going to get tipped more. But it's actually not. And I just pulled up this study. Well, I mean, that uh, I, uh, yeah, go yeah just real quick. I mean, c- keep in mind that the law, OK, is saying that waiters and waitresses are a different breed that they're a different standard of person sure because they're not i mean whether you agree with minimum wage laws or not and i certainly don't agree with them Mm. okay the bottom line is is the law says no they can make less so they are not equal under the law to everybody else and that's why this is crap but this also brings up sort of the the rest of the people that get tips so the rest of them get minimum wage or more Uh, like i'm thinking of baristas for instance at uh, starbucks there's that uh, thing of uh, you know for tips there and I recall when I used to go to Starbucks, I don't any longer, it's been a long time since I've been to a Starbucks, that that thing would be pretty full of bills and change and and that sort of thing. And I wonder, I know different people get different things, right? If you're getting this uh, big fancy uh, sundae in a cup, um, I can see why you might tip for that. But, you know, I'm just getting a cup of coffee, you're pulling a lever and then putting a cap on it. I'm not sure that I feel any obligation to tip for that service. Sure. Those folks are, um, you know, they're getting minimum wage plus tips so yeah. the tipping culture isn't even staying confined to restaurants right 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 have you worked in the services industry what do you think of tipping is it time for a change give us a call this is free talk live the sunday show Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. LLC. 
If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938, 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Sunday night show. 855-450-3733 is the ProXPN toll-free call-in line for you. And we're talking about tipping or whatever's on your mind with you tonight. It's me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. And uh, Mark, did you have a message for us? Yeah, I want to tell you about, uh, I want want to have Brian actually tell you about ProXPN. He's a little better at it than I am. Oh, I would love to talk about ProXPN because this is one of the things, you know, in, in a world, and really we are in this world where the digital space is as critical as the meat space, as the analog life. Uh, And if you want to do digital activism, this is the real deal. 
okay? And that is getting a VPN service. A VPN is a virtual private network, and what it does is it encrypts all of your data that goes up from your computer or your smartphone before it gets to the ISP. Uh, it allows you to get past uh, country blocks most of the time, uh, you know, because because countries, other countries, and, and just just wait for the U.S. to do this, or actually try going to a gambling site in the United States. Good luck with that. You're not going to get there. Uh, and and so what, one of the ways, so every country, even the land of the free, blocks the internet in one way or the other. And also, again, the land of the free is also watching you more than any other country on planet Earth. Of course, uh, that being the NSA, as we know, due to Edward Snowden. How do you combat all of this? You get a VPN and you get the VPN from ProXPN. They are the best in the business, in my opinion, okay, uh, they well, use the opinion of a lot of people there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The I will add yeah. my, my endorsement to that. Yeah, they, I mean they are they are worldwide, they are global, and they are growing uh, by the day because that's how everybody recognizes that this is something. If you are using a smartphone, a tablet, a computer, this is something that you want, and this is available for, for Windows, OS X, iOS, Android. You take your pick. You can use it. Use this Open VPN as its backend, so this is open source. Okay, it's been checked out by the geeks. Uh, so go to proxpn.com, and if you use the code FTL20, you can get 20% off the lifetime of the premium account that you order with them. Uh, I mean, that's the lifetime of the account. So as long as you have it, you're going to get that 20% off. Also, you can use Bitcoin, and you'll get an even greater savings, and you get 33 percent off uh, the price of that so use the code ftl20 go to proxpn.com take control of your digital life your privacy and just your freedom your digital freedom and which again reflects into your analog freedom proxpn yeah absolutely it's kind of like the bare minimum in this day and age to absolutely. have a, a good vpn like proxpn and we've been really really happy with them so ftl20 one more time let's go to skype where benjamin is on the line hey benjamin you're on free talk live what's on your mind hey. Hey guys, uh, I wanted to discuss something that's been brought up on the show uh, a few times uh, through the years, and that is it's brought up how most people think they have above average intelligence, and then it's always and then it's always jokingly, well, how can most people have above average intelligence, right? Right. I think that we we read some study at one point that four percent of the population believes that they are below average, uh, meaning that. Uh, 50 or excuse 96 percent uh, would believe that they're at least uh, average or above average by the is that what it, yeah so 96 that believe that they're average to above average which makes yeah. uh four percent 46 percent of them mistaken there's a name for this too benjamin it's called illusory superiority and there's a good wikipedia article on that that summarizes um some other studies that have been done i think there was one that was that was done in like a stanford business school where ninety percent of the class believed that they were in the top two percent of the class, or something like that, and uh, it just goes on from there, where people believe that they're better than everyone else, and an impossibly large amount of people tend to believe that they're above average. So go go ahead with your thoughts on that. Well, no, I uh, I agree that probably most people do believe they are above average, but the uh, the thing is. Most people do have more knowledge than uh, than the average about something, right? So you might be like, because now you're uh, need to just figure out, well, knowledgeable or how are you determining what the average is? Are we talking just sheer brain power, like an IQ score? Of course, th then you can't have a, above average intelligence. But there are plenty of people who might know a lot about quilting. I know nothing about quilting. Um, you know, so sure. they have, yep. you know, so they can have above average knowledge of something particular mm -hmm. and that might lead them to believe that they then have above average knowledge about most things than other people because they have, uh, this one thing that they're I sort more of, knowledgeable about. I, I sort of deal with this with my wife to some extent because I'm one of those people that really shouldn't be put in charge of any sort of maintenance task at all. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just bad. I don't know where my car keys are. I forget to plug my cell phone in. Uh, you know, I just... I just can't remember to do these things. And this leads my wife to feel very superior to me in many um, circumstances. She's like, you just 
couldn't do this stuff without me, that, that kind of attitude. And, um, you know, but, but one of the reasons she's my wife is because she fills in the gaps uh, in my, you know, in my life. But, I, you know, I mean, one of the th- questions I ask since she's a stay at home mom at that point is, is if I'm so dumb, what's that make you for making me the sole breadwinner in this house? You know, and I mean, you really got to kind of ask yourself that. But I mean, yeah, people have different when 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 they do well at things, they feel like I'm smart at this. And so if you're good at taking care of a house, hey, you're smart at that. And there's mm-hmm. no doubt about it. And people do have lots of different forms of intelligence. Um, I, I, you know, I I took something at one point that uh, some kind of intelligence exam and found out that I'm a spatial conceptual genius. Yeah. Well, fat lot of good that's going to do me. I'm not a, it's not like I'm an architect or anything, you know. <laughs> no, Mark, you're a super genius. They just didn't have that category on the test. Yeah, they the, the getting anvils dropped on my head. <laughs> but there well, is that book from the Harvard psychologist who alleges that there's like seven spheres or realms of intelligence and Benjamin, I thought there were 17. Oh, well, maybe that's true. I mean, it's no doubt that there are different domains of quote, intelligence and what actually is intelligence, we really need to define it more specifically if we're going to say that, if we're going to ask people to rate themselves on sure. uh, some measure like intelligence, right. we have and to IQ, say what intelligence is. IQ is really just the ability to take an IQ exam. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. But there is, this is a real cognitive bias, though. There's a famous study called uh, the the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is um, basically they... There were these two scientists, Kruger and Dunning. They gave people a specific test. So the test involved like logic problems, grammar questions, and things like that. And then they asked the people to rate their performance on the test relative to the rest of the group that took the test with them. And people still, even the people in the bottom quadrant of the test, believe that they were in the top. So that is a clear illustration of illusory superiority bias where people think that they're better at some task than they are, even in the face of um, a specific task and objective evidence that they're not the best at it. But uh, go ahead with your thoughts, well, Benjamin. Well, and to show my own biases uh, and before it looks like I'm uh, trying to defend too many people here. Um, I think there are some basic knowledge things that, you know, a, an adult should have. And there have been uh, polls that have been done that show about a quarter of American adults don't know whether the sun goes around the earth or the earth goes around the sun. And I am willing to state I am smarter than those people. Indeed, Benjamin. Well, it, hold the line if you got more to say. Uh, this is an interesting subject. 855 450 free, 855 450 3733. Are you smarter than everyone else? Call in and tell us why on Free Talk Live, the Sunday edition. These days, so many suffer from heartburn, stomach ulcers, and acid reflux. And most never realize it is the high acidity within the body that causes their discomfort. While selective diet choices can help, AlkaVision Plasma pH drops can really make a change. A few drops added to water can optimize your body's pH level, ridding you of harmful waste and acid, promoting health and restoring vibrance and energy. Healthy pH levels make all the difference. Difference. High acidity can also cause depression, insomnia, and irritability. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops bring you vital balance that can be truly life-changing. Alkalizing boosts immune response, reduces headaches and cramping, and even helps prevent bone loss. This is simple science that helps your body do what's natural. Order your AlkaVision pH Drops for just $29.95 at AlkaVision.com, A-L-K-A-Vision.com, or call 800-518-7615. Alka- your body, supercharge your health at alkavision.com. When you're coping with bad news and the news media come calling, and they will, don't clam up. As notorious political figures find out the hard way, the cover-up can be worse than the crime. So get out in front of unfavorable news about your company, your group, or organization, or yourself. The sooner you confront a negative story, the sooner it will be over. Responding as quickly to negative stories as you do to positive ones enhances your credibility. Hiding embarrassing information or lying will do more damage than damage control. Never stonewall. Tell your side of the story, use specifics, and detail what corrective action has already been taken. Respond in kind. If the issue is emotional, don't sound like a cold, unemotional Mr. Spock. 
For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Our education system is frankly government run, government yeah. funded, um, and we're dumbed down. You could you could and go down said, the laundry list of the different things oh. that people would admit that the government did wrong or botched up or cost way too much, and it still doesn't have any effect on them. They still just bounce right back and say, well, we need government to do all these things. Well, yes, I, they make some mistakes. Yes, they spend billions of dollars too much. Sure, they kill innocent people around the world, but we need them. <laughs> <laughs> we have to have I, them I do these things. I find it quite amazing that, you, you know, they say the first thing they seem to do is, like, oh, turn to government. They've got the solution somehow. Yep. Goodness knows That's happens. what they've been programmed to do by programmed the government thing, schools. Exactly. Brainwashed, absolutely brainwashed. And they're so dumb about it. They believe it's the case. However, you, you then ask the next question, if you, if you dare to, is uh, you say, well, OK, well, would you trust any politicians? And the first answer is no way. Right. right. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. Now, the three of us uh, are totally above average intelligence. Geniuses, I'm telling you. And in fact, I am the most above average of all. I am like the genius of Free Talk Live. You have the cred (laughs) with the uh, the doctorate from the uh, the Ivy League school, right? (laughs) Like you know, you're the least likely to say something. Like, you know, I'm just smarter than you people. But, <laughs> like, you is all we have to do is, you know, say Dr. Murphy, and then, you know, that's <laughs> it. Well, right? you know, honestly, speaking from experience, there are a lot of people at, even at Ivy League schools, in medical schools, and PhD programs who just don't have basic intelligence skills. Like, and there are a lot of people also who are very compliant and will just kind of follow orders and, aren't really independent things. Critical thinking is, um, I don't know whether it's a form of intelligence, it's a skill. Yeah. It's something that, uh, you know, that one learns and then exercises over time. You don't have to be a genius to critically think about things, yeah. <laughs> but you have to know how to do it and choose to exercise it. And it's exercise like any other form of exercise, because it's hard to step out of your paradigm and think differently. And, you know, if you want to exercise mentally... I recommend checking out modup.net. And that's M O D U P.net. And what you get at modup.net is modafinil. And you can look into this for yourself. Studies show one in five students use this as a cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits uh, a double digit increase in short term memory, fighting off fatigue, and just greater focus. Businessmen use it as well. All kinds of people use modafinil for whatever it is they need when they want that that critical edge. Uh, and, and believe me, modup.net, they're, they're delivering the real deal as far as modafinil. They provide only the highest premium modafinil. And to prove it, they are the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Uh, so go ahead, head over to modup.net, and you can use the code FTL. And you'll get 10 free tablets of modafinil with your order if you use the code FTL. Also, they are huge supporters of the Bitcoin community. And so if you pay with Bitcoin, and you can do this, 
you get 33% off. Now, Free Talk Live is a worldwide show. ModUp.net is a worldwide business with world-class customer service, shipping worldwide. So it's up to you to look into your local local laws and local prescriptions and regulations and whichever uh, when you ch- look into Modafinil from ModUp.net. But when you go there, use the code FTL and use Bitcoin, ModUp.net. All right. 855-450-3733 is the number to call if you've got something on your mind. You want to bring it up with us tonight on the air? Let's go to the phones and talk with Reggie. Well, we had Benjamin. Is he? Benjamin dropped. Yeah, he said he had uh, got out everything he had to say. But thank you for reminding me uh, for that. But he said, and he also said uh, next week he's going to call in with uh, the fatal flaw that he found in Bitcoin. <laughs> so we'll have to wait for next week for that cliffhanger. But now we go to Reggie listening in Atlanta. Hi, Reggie. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey there, guys. I just wanted to say I love you guys. Sure, I listen to you religiously via my um, iPhone. And um, I really struggle with the, the peaceful protest part, at least for me personally, because I'm, my family depends on my income 100%. And I was listening to the Rich Paul situation. Mm-hmm. And I just am not in a position where I can afford to be locked up or handcuffed or harassed by um, people in costumes mm-hmm. at all. So I don't, I don't really know what to do. I don't know what... Where's my place in this movement? Because mm. uh, I, I really look at that as just it's not an option for me. Yeah, Reggie, uh, I, I hear you. I'm really with you on that. Um, and this is something I've struggled with, too, myself. I just um, I found out about the Free State Project about oh, more than eight years ago at this point and moved to New Hampshire. And I always saw from the beginning a lot of people who really were willing to do civil disobedience and go to jail and get arrested. And that was just something... I was never interested in myself and, you know, I don't have uh, children or family really, but I depend on myself for income and I don't want to be uh, yeah. sitting in a jail cell and losing my home and all that. So um, that was just not, never something I was into, but the good news is it's, it's totally optional. You don't have to do that. I mean, yes, it could happen to you um, just whether you like it or not. It's, we live in a world where lots of things are illegal and sometimes they're just going to get you for stuff, but you don't have to kind of uh, behave in a way that may make that more likely to happen. You know, if you know what I mean, like you don't have to kind of go out of your way to protest if that's not some if that's something you're trying to avoid. So there are lots of things you can do instead. Uh, the thing that I kind of settled on was trying to get my my job and my living situation and just my life in general um, to a place where I could, I had freedom in the areas that I could control. So for instance, I kind of left a corporate job and started my own business. That was a big, big, um, step for freedom in my life. I sort of adjusted my relationship so that I was spending time with people that, you know, brought positive things into my life and made me feel happy. Um, so those are, and you know, also the place where you live can be another thing. So, you know, if you have the option to go live somewhere else where maybe you would feel freer, that that could always be something you could do too. Well, Reggie, I'd say you're doing something right here and something wrong here. The right thing you're doing is you're thinking about what can I do um, as an individual to forward human freedom on the planet? And the wrong thing you're doing is beating yourself up over it. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like there's, there's, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's, let's face it. Ian's been arrested several times and so far world, not freer, not one skosh freer. So, um, you know, the, the arrest itself essentially brings attention to something. It's by no means the, uh, the only thing that people can do. I it think- does get a lot of attention and press though. And so it seems like if you're watching and observing from outside, it can seem like, well, that's the only thing that people are doing up there. Either you're getting arrested or you're doing nothing. Right. But there but are lots of people who are doing stuff behind behind the scenes. Sure. And people are setting up businesses, which I think in and of itself is a uh, you know a, oh, a huge step. That's a huge amount of activism. I mean, yeah. like if you could work for someone who actually understood freedom, that would just be such a huge step forward in your life. If you could work for yourself and not have to worry about a boss, that's a huge step forward for freedom. And you're also providing a valuable service, hopefully, if your business is successful, that's going to make other people's lives better. So 
entrepreneurship and, yeah hell hell yeah and there's people doing political stuff and people that support the political type stuff there's people, i wouldn't recommend that well i don't think that makes you freer but <laughs> I, I don't think it does i think it uh but neither does getting arrested no, i mean i agree like, with that in too both, in that's both why cases, i don't do either one <laughs> you're laying yourself up on the altar of freedom in the uh, hopes that you can take less freedom in order to give uh, more freedom to someone else and that's to some extent is what we're talking about here right reggie no, i don't think freedom involves sacrifice like that's the thing you don't have to sacrifice you can actually do things that enrich your life and make you freer and make other people. Well, you're going to sacrifice like entrepreneurship. In your case, you're sacrificing money to for, in property taxes. I mean, there's nothing you can do to avoid those. You're going to have to pay them. And but there's, I'm not paying my property taxes to bring about a freer world. I'm no, doing it because I'm under duress and threat, and I want to live in a certain place. You're avoiding the pain that you might feel to um, you know avoid that and and claim freedom in that area, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Right. It's either what is what what is the choice? The choice is painfully pay the property tax or painfully sit in jail or have painfully have your house stolen. So I'll choose the pain of paying rather Indeed. than, you know, <laughs> right. But that's not really I guess I don't consider that really activism. I'm not like, oh, oh. I wouldn't claim pay paying your property taxes as activism either. But I mean, let's not let's not say that Stephanie's free. Right. <laughs> uh, OK, sure. You just but like maximize freedom in your life. Yeah, the the reason I focus on personal freedom is because that's what I have control over. You can over. control it. You know, and it's it's kind of an easy win. It's like the the low hanging fruit. Do the things in your life that you have more control over, and you're going to see results, and you you'll, you won't feel as burned out. Like I felt really burned out when I tried experimenting with politics. Yeah, because you can't control it. You can't even at a state level. You just one person can't. The results are slow, the no matter grinding what. Grinding gears of the state. Uh, one. One other thing I want to mention, Reggie, too, is like speaking out or just, you know, in this country, you know, you can still speak out. You can start a blog. You can start some kind of alternative media. You don't have to film cops and put them on your blog if that's not your thing. But, you know, you just speak out about freedom or news or whatever is important to you. I think you it's or, just important to tell your family and friends what you think about, yeah. you know, these these messages. And you attract friends through that, too, who are going to be a uh, similar mindset. So any, I'll give you the final comments, Reggie. Did that help? Yeah, it really did help me out a lot. You know, my, it's my thing. I'm not really afraid of law enforcement. I'm afraid of what my actions would be if I'm calling a conflict with law enforcement. I don't, you know, yeah. I feel very, I feel awful when I see the YouTube videos of cops overstepping the line and knocking yeah. people's Yeah, I understand, out Reggie. We're, we're up against the clock. Thanks for calling in. This is Free Talk Live. Thank you. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855 340 SAVE. 855 340 7283. Results will vary from case to case. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the morning roar. 
That's right. Every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live, the live Sunday show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-3733, the ProXPN toll-free call-in lines for you to bring up anything that's on your mind. Or call us on Skype at lrn.fm. Uh, we were just talking to Reggie about sort of like, what can you do if you want to do activism, but you don't want to go to jail and maybe you don't necessarily want to work on the political process either. Well, there's a lot of things you can do, um, you know, reaching out, working on personal freedom and that kind of thing. But another thing you can do is uh, share free talk live. You know, we make a content, we make content, we make a content. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Very good doctor. We, we make content every <laughs> single night of the week. Uh, you know, 21 hours of show a week. Well, I guess it's more like 14 hours of show when you chop out the commercial breaks, but Free Talk Live is I'm live. I'm still on- sitting here for three hours a night, yeah. plus, <laughs> plus the show prep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Live on the radio for um, 21 hours a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern every night. And our archives are over at archives.freetalklive.com. So if you want to spread the message of liberty, what better way than to share Free Talk Live archives with your friends or listen to them yourself? Pick out the good ones and put them up on the Internet in whatever way suits you to reach out to other people with the message of freedom. Right. I'm not going to claim that everybody's going to love Free Talk Live, but I will claim that Free Talk Live is a it's the 42nd rated the 42nd talk show in the nation. It is not bad. <laughs> Some people, There's a lot of talk shows in the in the country, right? Some people will like it. And they will, uh, you know, the people that do like it are going to hear the message of liberty presented to them in a way they likely have never heard it before. So that is, uh, that's special. Right. Now, before that, we, oh yeah. We were talking about types of intelligence with uh, Benjamin. Yeah. I thought, you know, I, I think this is a very interesting topic. Now, I am one of those people that is so ridiculously vain. I believe that, uh, you know, you people on the planet are sheep com- compared to me. You know, like that that's how intelligent I think I am. I'm with you. Right. I, no. yeah, <laughs> I, I, I agree. You can rule alongside me. Uh, but the, oh my God. You're the not vast majority me. of people, I really think, really do think this way. 
I think that they just won't say it because it sounds so hideously vain. Well, you know, there, there's a great, uh, uh, what do you call it, a, a cartoon or a, a, a drawing in, in the newspapers, you know, one, one of those, where the political cartoons like yeah. that, and it's everybody sitting in, on, a, on, a, on a subway, you know, and they're all riding in it, and everybody has the word bubble above them and says, everybody's so stupid. You know, and I think that really hits it. Yep. You know, that that that's really yeah. how people do think. I, I I think that, you know, I mean, when you're when you look at just a democracy, the very concept of a democracy, where or a republic, whatever term you wish to use to describe a form of government where you have the power to tell other people what to do, really just sort of lays out what humans think about other humans, because. I mean, there's some things that you shouldn't be involved in. Yeah, I, I think that libertarianism really points it out great that your rights end at my nose. Um, you know, there's there's some interesting conversations to, had, to be had about rights theory and that kind of thing. And on Free Talk Live, we try to have those. But when... Like, I don't want to have a democratic consensus on the best way to do brain surgery on me. I want a brain surgeon, the best brain surgeon on the planet, to do my brain surgery. And I want all you people who are completely unqualified to answer these questions to leave him alone. Like, these like questions on economics. Well, like when we're talking about uh, or her, yeah, indeed, <laughs> yeah. yes, I, I use him in the, uh, the the broad term. Uh, you know, the in economics we talk about the the minimum wage. Everybody thinks they've got an opinion on minimum wage. Indeed. I don't care what your opinion is on minimum wage. Are you an economist? If you're not an economist, zip it. The problem <laughs> is when an, opinions are enforced at the point of a gun through right. the political system, and that's, that's what exactly a republic what... or a de- democracy. That's what they end up being. Absolutely, yeah. Well, so, uh, speaking of uh, arbitrary opinions, this is funny. Uh, I want to get back to the tipping story that we started out the show with. Oh, yeah, with. the tipping story. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So just in case you're just tuning in, we had started off the show tonight talking about a restaurant that has instituted a new policy where they've abolished tipping. And spoiler alert, the new policy is that uh, at the end of the shift, the servers are going to get paid either $10 an hour or 20% of their food sales, whichever is, is more. And they did that because they had had servers walking off the job that they couldn't make ends meet and people weren't tipping well and yada, yada. So um, that was the policy. But what I think is really interesting is just the the concept or the idea of tipping in general. And we talked about the history of it, maybe sort of arising from prohibition, having this uh, socially enforced tipping of servers. But of course, y- you know, you don't tip... Um, someone who helps you in a shoe store, right? You don't, sometimes you tip a bellhop. Sometimes you don't, like if you get a shuttle, like from the airport, a free shuttle from the airport to a hotel, sometimes you tip the person, sometimes not. It's like, what do you do in that situation? A hairdresser, do you tip a hairdresser? You're already paying them for the haircut. Uh, And and, well, I mean, there's also this pro, sort of this, uh, this idea that you don't tip business owners. And so a hairdresser can be one of two things. They can be working for a salon as an employee, mm. uh, you know, a, well, an hourly, salon. yep, an hourly employee and get, um, you know, tips on top of that. Or they can be renting their booth and taking a large percentage of each head they cut and then all of their tips. Mm-hmm. And in that circumstance, it's, you know, in that the salon dictates the price, but uh, what 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 do you do when you go like for instance where I get my hair cut the lady does it out of her house um, you know she's got a little garage area that she does hair in there and she is the business owner you know she sets her pricing if she wants to get a tip a certain amount she should probably just set her pricing around that right yeah instead of uh, just having people give her a random amount of money afterwards and and I think that yeah I like the idea t- of tipping. But I'm also sort of in competition with people who are tipping, who sort of do it willy nilly. You know, they they just why are you tipping as much as you are or as little as you are? I think often people tip because they want to avoid embarrassment of making a faux pas in case they were supposed to tip and they didn't. You know. Well, another thing about tipping is kind of interesting is is it shows um, the goodness in humans. How about people who are traveling along the interstate? Now, yeah. if you stop off at uh, you know a, a, a food joint at the interstate, you're you're going from New York to Miami. You stop off in uh, South Carolina, and you're getting something to eat. You have no social pressure mm-hmm. to tip in that circumstance, other than sort of it's what you're supposed to do. It's the mm-hmm. good thing to do. 
but you're never going to see those people again. You're going to get in your car. Um, you know, by the time you get out the door, the the server will see whatever it was that you left, penny or a uh, hundred dollar bill, somewhere between that likely, and you're going to be getting the car, loading up. They're not going to do anything about it. You can just choose not to tip, for instance. Mm-hmm. People do it. Yeah, I don't know. I've had instances where if uh, if the situation wasn't acceptable to the waiter or waitress, like actually one time the waitress literally came running out of the restaurant uh, and, and chased me down, you know, because and what happened was I didn't sign the receipt. That was the issue. But like she was like, oh, is there a problem here or whatever? Uh, I, or I think I took the wrong one. I think that's what it was. It, it, oh, I, I took the so receipt. Didn't that, fill it out. Yeah, you, I didn't you took fill the one it that out. You signed. Right. Uh, yeah. But I mean, she came running out thinking that I didn't give her a tip, mm. you know, and I just did the wrong receipt. And so, I mean, sometimes I think they will. If, if you don't tip them, maybe they will come chase you down. Yeah. Maybe I've never had it happen to me. Then again, I've never tipped, never not tipped anyone. So I guess I wouldn't know that circumstance. Sure. Yeah, I've never... I, as a server, got not, was stiffed one time. Mm. Well, two times. One time, the 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 person addressed the issue with me before they left the restaurant. I don't know, you know, like she said, I just don't have any money to tip. And with her two kids there, I guess I didn't have anything to say about it. Wow. If you uh, don't have any money to give a tip, why did you go out to eat? Right. Well, I didn't say that to her. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what can you do in that situation except hope it doesn't happen again? Right? Well, and, I mean, you know, and here's something else I wonder about is now I've worked in the past. I've worked in fast food and you can't get tipped. Like oh, they won't even allow food. for it in yeah. fast food. They won't let you get tipped. And it's like, well, wait a minute. You know, mm. I, I mean, I guarantee that, uh, yes, granted, it may not be the, the creme de la creme or the finest escargot you've ever had. Uh, but there's a lot of hard work mm. and care in the presentation and sometimes there's a lot of of customer service too oh tons well that mark you were saying like cooks can't get tipped but they often have as much to do with the service that someone receives as the server does right Right. a lot of times um it's sort of interesting you'll have a uh, people will base their tip on based on the food they got well the server hasn't cooked your food hasn't cooked anybody's food ever Mm -hmm. you know they they are a person who (laughs) moves things from uh, you know one location to another and smiles. That's all they do. And sometimes they'll get paid more and sometimes they'll get paid less than a cook. I always think it's interesting. The cooks complain about the servers when they do the, the hours that they do well. They never complain about the hours that they do poorly. Mm. <laughs> well, just to show how arbitrary tips can be, I've actually pulled up this study that compared side by side what happens if you draw a smiley face on the check, write thank you, introduce yourself by name if you're a server. I'm going to tell you how that affects tips coming up. You're going to be surprised. This is Free Talk Live, the Sunday show, 855-450-FREE. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, July 25th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,299, silver opened at $20.86, and Bitcoin is trading around $598.18. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code LIBERTY and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online, affordablesound.com, or call them up, 512-459-5253. In the news, Texans for Accountable Government will be having their next meeting July 28th at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub at 7 p.m. On the agenda is Heather Fazio from Marijuana Policy Project, Rachel Canny on winning elections, and Dr. Norman Horn will discuss the upcoming Christians for Liberty event with special guest Dr. Laura Presley, city council candidate for District 4. The Liberty Beat's own Justin Armand will be emceeing the event July 28th, 7 p.m. at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub. Texans for Accountable Government is a political action committee dedicated to creating a more free and prosperous Texas. More info at tagtexas.org. Christianity and Liberty come together in a first-of-its-kind conference planned for Saturday, August 2nd, on the campus of Austin's St. Edwards University. Norman Horn is the founder and chief editor of LibertarianChristians.com. Well, it has been the desire of a lot of my readers for some time to have the opportunity to come together and meet a lot of Christian libertarians all in one place. But it's no surprise that people wanted to see this happen, especially as we've been growing our presence in various corners of the web, like at our Christian Libertarian Facebook group. The all-day conference kicks off at 9 o'clock on the morning of August 2nd and will conclude with an evening social at 8.30. This is an opportunity to hear a number of Christian libertarian speakers talk about our views of faith and politics working in tandem. We have a number of great opportunities to fellowship together, to meet new people, and to discuss our views and encourage each other and equip each other to be better advocates for liberty from a Christian point of view. Peripheral events are also planned, with all liberty-minded individuals, not just Christians, invited to attend. Registration details and a full conference schedule can be found at libertarianchristians.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Cory Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at corymoreshow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is The Liberty Beat. For Friday, July 25th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. House Investigators Tuesday announced that the computer hard drive of ex-IRS official Lois Lerner was only scratched and not irreparably damaged. That report from Fox News. Investigators learned that Lerner's hard drive was recoverable after talking to IRS information technology experts, according to the committee. Members of Congress say the new information raises questions about potential criminal wrongdoing because the agency previously claimed the hard drive was recycled and potentially shredded. Investigators are still trying to determine whether the hard drive was scratched accidentally or deliberately. An entire Chinese town of 30,000 residents has been quarantined off from the rest of the country after a man in a nearby village died from bubonic plague. Officials are managing 10 checkpoints around the city of Yumen, preventing travel for more than a week now, as reported by the London Independent. At least 150 people who came into contact with the victim have been placed under direct observation. On Thursday, The Intercept released a 2013 document from the National Counter... Counter bleh. On Thursday, The Intercept released a 2013 document from the National Counterterrorism Center, which details the rules for placing individuals on terrorism watch lists, including the no-fly list. The 166-page document details what the government defines as terrorism, which includes everything from assassination and hostage-taking to destruction of government property or computers, and any act that is dangerous to property or intended to influence government through intimidation. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock on 1370 a.m. in Austin. That's 1370 a.m. Sundays at 4. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, 
and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online, CaboBobs.com. This is the Liberty Bean for Friday, July 25th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. After briefly reviewing several documents outlining his parents' dire financial circumstances today, 23-year-old Wesleyan University graduate Zach Wallace told reporters he had, quote, absolutely no clue how his mother and father are going to dig themselves out of the $35,000 of student loan debt they incurred to pay for his college education. I mean, this is going to be really hard on my parents. When I was in college, I just assumed that, you know, they would pay off my student loans within a few years of me graduating. But I never realized how expensive college is going to be for them. Wallace, who graduated with a film studies degree in 2012 and has since had two unpaid internships, told reporters that from the way prevailing interest rates are trending, his parents could easily be paying off his debt for the next quarter century. They're going to be paying for the rest of their lives. And on top of it all, they have to help me out with my rent, too. I mean, it sucks. It really, really sucks. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, the second hour of tonight's program. Yes, we are live here on Sunday night and taking your calls at 855-450-3733, where you can call and bring up anything that's on your mind. Tonight, it's me, Stephanie, with you. And Brian. And Mark. And, you know, in the last segment, we were starting to get into this study. We've been talking about tipping tonight. Um does it make sense? Where did it come from? Why did it start? Why is the U.S. one of the only uh, places in the world where people have this socially enforced kind of tipping? The answer is prohibition. Yeah, and the answer, surprisingly, is prohibition, which I did not know until Brian brought that up. So thank you, Brian. But I've got a study here that is, this is just really interesting. I, being a scientist, I have a Ph.D. in biochemistry, and being a scientist, I love data. <laughs> and I love when people do experiments that are carefully controlled and compare uh, one group to another group. And I thought you were into androids. Group. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're making a Star Trek reference there, yes. huh? Well, um, I, no comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I like it when there's, you know, a carefully controlled study that um, compares two variables and sees what the effect of that is. So there's been a study like that on tipping. And just to show how arbitrary it can be, um, the size of the tip that people might leave for a server. Here are some different behaviors on the part of servers that affect um, how much the customer leaves as a tip. So introducing yourself by name if you're a server will, will result in a 53% increase in your tip. The control group got 15% who didn't introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Stephanie. I'll be your server tonight. That's all they all they held different, you know, uh, between the two groups. If you didn't introduce yourself by name, you got on average a 15% tip. If you did introduce yourself by name, you got a 23% tip. Wow. On average. I'm not surprised that somebody who connects well with their customer gets a uh, gets a larger tip. That doesn't surprise me, and I I suppose it doesn't horrify me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, okay. There's, yeah, there's more. There's another one that you can do to sort of take it a little farther, though. Um, is is that have you ever seen servers that will have sort of in their uh, their their book, their ticket book, they'll have the pictures of their kids right there sort of on the back of the ticket book. So while they're writing, you see their kids. <laughs> have you ever seen this one? No. No. Okay. <laughs> you're not paying attention. <laughs> I must not be. Or yeah. I don't have the kid dar like the people who have kids. I, you know, I, I <laughs> I'm think not that, a parent, so I'm not looking at kids. I, I think that it's, you know, it's... It's one of two things. You forget what your kids look like and you need reminders, or um, you're clawing for that extra 10% that you might get out of somebody because, you know, hey, I'm just a single mom working here. And, you know, a lot of people, single, working, kids, whatever. But Or maybe they're trying to connect, right? Like if someone saw a picture of kids, they might say, oh, how old are your kids? I have a seven-year-old. And, and the person yeah. who says that um, is going to tip more. Yeah, I believe that. So uh, squatting down next to the table would you think that would make a difference if someone squats down next to the table i think it would yeah, well right. it does and it makes a different difference if you're a, a waiter versus versus a waitress so okay hold on where where, where, where is this control study hooters 
<laughs> I don't. <laughs> Hooters, <laughs> most of the most of the tables there are up high. Um, the ones yeah, that well, I've right. Well, I've just pictured because at Hooters, what they'll do is, is the woman will sit next to you. Yeah, uh, and, squeeze in. Yeah, get real close. Yep. And, you know, then take your order and, you know, kind of like hold the pen rather. Uh, or, you know, Wing House does that too. Yeah. So I, I, this I, is I just, wonder. I wonder that too. And that's a good question to ask, Brian. I don't know. Um, all I know is that they tested both male and female servers. So who gets they, more from squatting? Well, uh, women get more from squatting. I see. Uh, but they see, now, start Hooters, out lower. Though. So, okay, let me just say this statistic. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So, a waiter, so this is for a male a guy, okay, if they do not squat, they get 15%, uh, you know, a 15% tip. If they do squat, they get an 18% tip on average. So that's okay. a 20% increase in their tip. See, I would think squat. that would make the man less threatening, so he would probably, you know, go to that. I would have expected more from the uh, more more from a man squatting, would have been, would have been my guess. Yeah, I agree. Well, um, with a woman, if they squ- if they don't squat, they get 12%. And if they do squat, they get 15%. So so they have to squat just to get up to the level of a guy who doesn't squat. I would also wonder, um, I want to know about the tipping habits of men and women, too. Not just the tipping, you know, what, what the results are, but who's tipping here. Because I don't even fill out checks Mm -hmm. i I don't give a give out tips my wife does um you know she doesn't she she i haven't had money in 10 years um you know she just (laughs) she takes care of all of it so um you know i i sit there i you know yickety yak entertain the kid and you know she takes care of the bill or whatever so you know are women tipping women this poorly are men tipping women this poorly do women expect more from female servers than they do of male servers you know like i mean i've certainly heard the conversation men are dumb um we got to you know drag them along throw rocks at them or whatever it is that uh, that they do so you know do women expect female servers to be more competent and when they aren't they dock them more than they would a, a man who they expect to be dumb i don't know that's a good question um however there's another gender difference on drawing a happy face on the check so for listen to this this is really interesting so if a male if a male server um, draws a smiley face on the check, they get an 18% tip on average. If they don't draw a smiley face, they get a 21%. So, <laughs> so drawing a smiley face actually hurts them. If a female... What if ser- they are obviously and flamboyantly gay? That's a good... Yeah, I wonder how <laughs> gay, gay waiters stack up. I'm not sure. Because <laughs> if I had like some big buff dude waiting on me um, and then he decides to, to you know scribble a happy face on there, I can admittedly be like, uh, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how orientation factors into this. That's a good question. But but for a waitress, um, it will increase their tip if they draw a smiley face. Um, so they're starting out if with no smiley face, it would be a, a 28% tip. And if they draw a smiley face, it goes up to 33%. I see. I wonder what study. happens if they draw a wink. Oh, man. Well... Have you Break ever out had... the $100 bills. So hitting on servers, that's another interesting thing. I've have... been very successful at it. You have hit on servers? Uh, well, I, yeah. <laughs> I fit on customers. <laughs> Sorry. Yep, me too. So that's that's actually very interesting. I've never been a server, so I don't know. Um, I, I guess I work in a service industry, which is voiceover, but that's not an industry where people generally tip, although it is kind of a service industry. Mm-hmm. But um, what has your experience been with been like with um, hitting on clients or being hit on as a server? Well, if I'm talking it, about is a, it a client, is would be something entirely different. Yes. We're talking well, about well, in the ra- radio a, realm. Okay, not a client, a uh, a customer at a restaurant. A customer at a restaurant, uh, you know, I mean, usually you're getting this kind of play back and forth. I mean, flirting is a is a very subjective thing. Mm-hmm. I I think that. I think many people think they're good at it, and I think many people are not that believe it's, it's, it's kind of like illusory intelligence. Illusory superiority bias. Right. Yeah. Illusor, illusory superiority bias. I'll go for that. Um, so, okay. But what my opinion is, is that I'm good at it, and therefore I haven't stepped on any toes by the ways that I've conducted myself on either side of it. Okay, and so but I would obviously agree. there's a potential for weirdness there because yep. someone ostensibly is going to a restaurant to get some food, yep. not to get laid, yep. and <laughs> they go there, and the, the server is there because they have to be there because it's their job. Well, I suppose they could choose not to work in that industry, but they, they are there because it's their job, and they're trying to get paid, not get laid. 
And so how do you navigate that dynamic? Well, for one, um, I've got to say that, uh, you know, women are not these, uh, you know, these wayward waifs that uh, don't know what's going on. I mean, they're very clear what uh, what flirting's about. And they're also very clear the power they have um, as young women. Um, and I'm not saying every server's young, but every, you know, young women are clear the power that they have in their sexuality. Whether but they choose you... to employ it is an entirely different situation. If they choose not to employ it, then you're not getting the reciprocity and I wouldn't go any further with it. But how do you tell the difference between someone who's just being friendly because they maybe want a tip or because they want to be a good way a server? And, and Hooters, you can't. Indeed. Like, <laughs> okay, so as a as a man, mostly you're going to get played on this, but at the, in the playing, you've been flirted with, so things aren't so bad. Um, <laughs> as, but I mean, I guess the answer to your question is when they're horizontal, you know that they weren't kidding. <laughs> So you can't tell up until that? How could you, you don't know? know until she's in bed. How could you possibly know? Do well, you do you not think, Stephanie, okay. that you can fool the average dude by flirting with him? No, I I could probably. Yeah, of course you could. <laughs> look, I like women too, but even if I thought that a female server was flirting with me, I would just assume that she was just being friendly and she didn't actually want to... Go on Leave a date. your you number more. on the back of the receipt. You need more vanity. I guess that's what we need. 855-450-FREE. <laughs> this is Free Talk Live. Have you ever successfully hit on a server or been a server that's been hit on? Tell us about it. It's Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Make Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain relieving braces too for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. 855-450-3733. No one's called in to uh, tell us how they successfully hit on a server yet, but there's still time. (laughs) I'm sure it happens. (laughs) Stephanie with you. And Brian. And Mark. You know, if I was a young guy, and i got to say that working in restaurants was always very successful for me. Um, I mean, because you're dealing with Oftentimes, the the staff is, uh, you know, weighs heavily female, especially these um, uh, these chain restaurants. You know, when you're talking about Chili's, Applebee's, uh, you know, Ruby Tuesdays, uh, TGI Fridays, whatever, you tend to be working with sixty percent, seventy percent women, and that puts you in a, you know. Uh, it, it you know drives up your commodity price, right? I mean, you're uh, lessening, uh, you know, the, your your amount of competition, and I think that that's. Uh, it's done and it's successful. So you're saying to get a job at one of these restaurants? Well, I, first thing I would if say, you want to meet women. Uh, I think I think that would be a successful uh, plan. First thing I would say to a young man is learn to dance, because take a yoga class. Yoga classes, yeah, indeed, yoga classes. It, yep, that sounds more fun than getting a job at a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to have something that fits into your uh, into your lifestyle. Indeed. I mean, if you've got a job that you've already got a job that you like. Well, then don't get a job at a restaurant. If you don't, however, have a job that you like, dislike the one at the restaurant, um, you'll, you may dislike it less. So anyway, uh, if you want to get Bitcoins, I, I don't know that that's going to attract the opposite sex no, in any way, know, this, way, shape, or form. That's a great icebreaker is, hey, do you have any Bitcoin? And then just just go. Just talk about Bitcoin? Yeah, and just start, what? no, what's that? I think yeah. that uh, this would be better advice for women if you are uh, if, if you want to meet men, get into Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. <laughs> if you want to get some Bitcoin, however, the, the best way to do that is ExpressCoin.com. You don't really have to come into contact with very many people to do it either. That's true. You can go to ExpressCoin.com and you can use the check uh, or wire transfer or money order option um, and just get some bitcoins. Now you can go to a local credit union that has shared branching, make a deposit and you'll get your bitcoins within a business day, which is a great option. Uh, you will have to deal with a teller at that point, but that's that's okay. It could work out good for you. You can get bitcoin, dogecoin, litecoin, blackcoin, darkcoin. They they're looking at other cryptocurrencies that you might be interested in. It's available in Canada. It's fast, easy, safe, um, inexpensive. And they pride themselves on their customer service. Complete legal, too. They're licensed MSB over at ExpressCoin.com. All right. Let's go to Skype, where we've got a call on the line from Nathan. Hey, Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, everyone. What's on your mind tonight? Uh, Well, Mark brought up this interesting topic of hitting on waitresses. And before I talk about this, I want to say... um, it makes sense to talk about this topic because a lot of restaurants have a, shall we say, a policy of uh, only hiring women that meet a certain standard. Yeah, and actually, it's codified. Um, I've actually seen the dress codes really? for Hooters and then even uh, clothing stores like, uh, what was it, American Apparel, or they only hire oh, yeah. certain types of people who have certain looks. Uh, and with Hooters, for instance, like you are required to wear makeup, you're required to do your hair and wear shoes that are high heels and stuff like that and i suppose 
you what's I would that? have thought they would have wore tennis shoes with that outfit, but I I never paid that much well, attention to the servers at Hooters mm-hmm. because it always seemed uh, it's tennis pretty, shoes. pretty close to a yeah. uh, strip club um, to me. Yeah, maybe it's tennis shoes. But, but they... I love their wings. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah, you told that story once where you asked a girl on a date to go to Hooters I and did. have some wings. And she I was like the offended. wings. <laughs> and she was, uh, she was uh, you know, upset that I would ask her that. And I suppose if I would have thought about it, that maybe I could have guessed that this woman who's I suppose relatively flat-chested, that's never meant anything to me, um, might have been offended that I asked her to a Hooters restaurant on a first date. But I didn't think about that at all. It was close to where we worked. We worked together, and they had good wings, and I wanted to go there. Well, well uh, I'm so- Yeah, go ahead, Nathan. Uh- well, uh, asking if the waitress if she has Bitcoin is uh, something I might be inclined to do, but somehow I don't think that's going to be very effective. But <laughs> I was actually talking about like normal restaurants. Like there's a restaurant I go to where they serve this really good pasta, and there's a mostly I think it's all women, and just I don't know maybe there's some kind of code like you have to wear high heels or something, but they're all stunning. So I assume that's not random. They're probably not um, eating the pasta either. <laughs> Just <indeed>. saying. <laughs> so I thought I, I thought I would provide some context to justify why we're having this discussion because that that is definitely something that seems to happen a lot. Um, I don't know if they. I don't know if all, I don't know if all restaurants take it that far. Well, all, they can't. All the staff. Wait, well, they can't take it that far. Um, and it. Well, this because one does. There, there are certain you know people want to be servers. Some people are attractive. Some people aren't. And uh, you know you they can be a good server without being attractive. Indeed, you can be an excellent server. You can be the best server in the restaurant mm-hmm. without being uh, attractive. But uh, you know, I mean, obviously, the restaurants that say, "Well, we're going to have mostly attractive servers," that benefits the attractive servers because it sort of dries up the general tip price. Um, it makes it more of a um, you know more of a high end restaurant. You're going to pay for that in the the food price and all these other things and you know I, I guess it's just it's just one of those unfairnesses of life i rush limbaugh talks and- about uglo americans and i think that this is really <laughs> insightful stuff um not that i consider the guy to be particularly insightful in everything he says i just think that look there's nothing you're going to do to make the world fair um no it's true and people just are born in different circumstances however it is like scientifically proven that people who are better looking get higher salaries they get you know they get hired more i don't know if they get more tips but i wouldn't really be surprised about that i wouldn't doubt it at all yeah i have well i have to say i never successfully hit on a waitress so i decided to google how to hit on waitress and i got two slightly different responses one of them was from ask men and it kind of weaves a story where you connect to the server on a human level well that's the only thing that's going to (laughs) work apparently that involves uh using waitress lingo like uh for example asking about the dishes that are eight six which is apparently some kind of slang for dishes that are ha- are, are scheduled to be thrown out well i am and- um, what? Right. <laughs> wow. working, having worked that, in a restaurant i have no clue what eight sixing is that seems like okay. a weird well, uh, piece of advice well, that i well, let, let, wouldn't let, work if you didn't know what it meant <laughs> <laughs> right, but let, let's grant the premise that you somehow acquire the, the the lingo that's used in the in the server industry. So the, I think it's interesting. It's kind of a subjective approach because you're saying, well, um, try to empathize with this person. Um, I'm just reading down what the story is trying to do. Empathize with them. Use the same kind of language they use. Connect with them on a human level. But the first hit that comes up on Google for how to hit on waitresses is basically just a bullet bulleted list of do's and don'ts, which sound more objective, more more factual. For example, don't respond to her initial greeting by shouting, we're not ready, or do not lecherously stare at her chest, or, you know, and then... (laughs) Unless it has something written on it, which then gets confusing, right? (laughs) Right, right. Or do not complain about how high the prices are. See, these are really like obvious kind of objective things. Uh, And then the do's are things like say please and thank you, and be sure to tip 20% and seal the deal by writing your number on on the receipt. Uh, so I'm wonder I'm wondering, Mark, what's your analysis? Is it do you agree with the more subjective approach? Or uh, the more we'll get Mark's approach? analysis here in moments. This is a, a good cliffhanger. And Nathan, hold the line if you would. I, I'd like to talk with you more about this. We had a tip from uh, Derek J during the break saying no, Derek agreed with my tip, <laughs> and I'm going to share it. Okay, <laughs> we'll find out what that is in just moments here on Free Talk Live, the Sunday edition. And if you have tips for hitting on servers, eight fifty five four fifty free. More coming up. 
Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. Our website, of course, freetalklive.com, where you can find archives of our shows and also our content submission system, which is kind of integrated with Reddit. So you basically can submit show prep and people will vote it up or down and the most popular ones make it to the top of the uh, page. And that's at our website, freetalklive.com. The number to call if you want to bring up anything that's on your mind tonight is 855-450-3733. That's the ProXPN toll-free call in line. Well, speaking of Bitcoin, we talked about in the uh, last segment how to go about getting some Bitcoin, expresscoin.com. But Brian, have you had a chance to 
take a look at the new app for blockchain? Oh yes, it is slick. What do you think? I love it. I love it. it it's really it's got a great look, a very modern look to it, and way more intuitive now. Yep. Uh, I mean, they took advantage of, especially on Android, Google, you know, they, they spend a lot of time in their design. And so they pretty much ran with, you know, with a lot of Google's, their hollow or their material design. Or I think hollow is what they call it, the design language. And it looks so good and it is so easy to use. So they were able to take advantage of a lot of man hours worth of design and blockchain did it. Now, um, I have an old version of uh, an old Android and I really do need to step up. I just don't feel like it. It, it almost serves my needs. So sure. I haven't uh, gone and stepped up and got a new, new phone, but um, you only need the level of technology that works for you. Seriously. <laughs> it's, it's true. <laughs> uh, and I, I'm aware of that and I kind of been hanging on cause I just yeah. don't want to learn a new phone. And I, I hate the tyranny of the touchscreen. Yep, I do too. not like touchscreens. I, pre- I prefer to have a little keyboard and that puts limits my options greatly. Um, but I, I can't try the new app out because I, mine just doesn't support it. Right. So what is it? Is it just like the old one with a different skin on it or? No, no, no. This is really, really newly done. Now, of course you put in your password first and you get there. It's got this nice, pretty blue. I mean, you know, you're dealing with blockchain when you see that blue, uh, and then you get in to the app, uh, and it's, it's very simple up top. You have uh, spend. And then you have accounts, and because you can have, uh, it looks like you can have, to some degree, have multiple wallets on it. And then you have receive. And it's very clear as to where before there used to be like these funny arrows yeah, the, the to, arrows. to choose through. Uh, now it tells you exactly where you're going and what you're doing. And there's there's a nice big button at the top that looks like a QR code. So when you want to be scanning a QR code, you can just pop that and it does it. There's also one of the best features on it is it has a refresh button up top where it's a circular arrow and that means you know because sometimes you're waiting for that uh, confirmation to come through with bitcoin sure. not long ever especially with blockchain.info or with blockchain.com i should say uh but you can hit that refresh all the time that way because before i used to have to if i was waiting for a payment i'd have to like close out the app you know i'd have to what they call kill the app now that's not even necessary very smooth go to blockchain.com get the new app and uh enjoy it Back to Skype, where Nathan is on the line. Now, Nathan, you had uh, brought up the subject. Well, I guess you hadn't really brought it up. We brought it up, but you followed up on the subject of hitting on servers at restaurants. And Mark had some tips he wanted to share on this, <laughs> right? Well, so, yeah, yes, go ahead, I brought up I brought up the subject of uh, wh- why would we even be asking this question? And the reason is that there's a, apparently a standard of hiring attractive people for being in servers or being in restaurants. You know, it's kind of like... Um, that uh, something Stefan Molyneux said in some video about television, where he said, "On television, the good guys um, what was it the, the good the good guys are confident and handsome, and the bad guys are uh, repulsive and uh, not confident, or something like that." Yeah, <laughs> see, kind I, of, I kind of disagree with that assessment, but that's all right. We'll we'll move well, on. I think something similar is going on here. It's uh, there's clearly an incentive to, uh, like Mark was suggesting, to hire attractive people. I will say so this: you know, I was actually a manager of a fast food restaurant, and we're talking fast food, and there it was common practice for you to put the most attractive woman in the place on the registers. Okay. And it certainly wasn't because women are somehow better handling money. It was because that's what you wanted your customers to see. Absolutely. Um, I, I, you know, I think that it's, it's really a ludicrous notion that we're, uh, that the, you know, we're going to hire a bunch of attractive people and then you're a bad, bad person for finding them attractive. Um, You know, that's, (laughs) Nonsense. What if attractive people apply for those jobs because they naturally have more people skills or they're used to yeah, they're being interacted with or whatever? Indeed. <laughs> no doubt about well, it. I mean, could that be part of it? Like, could, it, could part of it be a self-selection? That's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm certain there's a certain level of self-selection. But, I mean, you know, there's a <laughs> – some things get obvious, you know, I mean, and Hooters is the, the very best example out there, right? Like, you've got to fit this – formula. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think that, uh, you know, I think it would be really ludicrous for me to demand, you know, go to say Hollywood and demand or, 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 you know, a Broadway play and demand to play the the lead in a color purple. You know, I'd make a very bad black woman. Um, It's ludicrous. So, I mean, I think that the way people look, their gender, you know, they they, they fit a certain, um, you know, formula for a business. That's fine if that's what they want to do. They may be missing out on some of the very best employees. If you think only men can do a certain job or only women can do a certain job or somebody has to be a certain level of attractiveness to do a specific thing, I think you're going to miss out. Oh, yeah, that's a mistake. 
But well, um, maybe it's just my residual puritanism or something that makes me uncomfortable with this. But it's just when it's this restaurant that I'm referring to is very brazen about it. There are only female servers, and they are all gorgeous. So you know, but <laughs> it's kind of in that your is face. not part of the theme of the restaurant. Like it's just no, an no, Italian... not not at all. It's, mm-hmm. it's just a grill, and you know, I eat there, and they have this really good bow tie pasta dish, and all the servers are very attractive women, and it's not Hooters. I, yep. I yeah, I, I've seen. So. I, yeah, it, and I'll just say in Utica, New York, I know of a couple of restaurants that do the same exact thing, where they are particularly. And this is not Could the restaurant be a front or something. Oh, for... I don't know, but I mean, they they are making sure that these women are stunning. You know, every well, single I... one of them. And in I fact, I knew one. That, I knew one when she turned forty-three. They finally fired her. Like, and and it was a real wow. situation that wow. they did that. But I mean, they just it was the age thing, and and there was no question about that. And even the the the, the general manager uh, told her so. Wow. Yeah. Well, plus there's, uh, I want Mark to answer my question, but there's also the angle of uh, kind of profiting off something that you didn't really earn or work for. I sure. guess maybe that's part of why I'm uncomfortable with it because. You know, people have natural assets and then they have things that they work for and uh, someone getting hired because they're attractive for being a waitress. It, uh, well, well, don't don't be that. little main, don't be little maintenance. Don't be right. little like maintaining. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> it takes a certain number amount of one effort. thing you can do yeah. to make yourself attractive is good oral hygiene. Yes. <laughs> you know, good looking <laughs> teeth, white teeth, um, the, as white as you can make them, uh, you know, straight teeth. These things really matter. Present teeth, that's probably the number one one. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, makeup is huge too. I mean, it can take it, it could take upwards of an hour, you know, if you're a woman. To I apply knew, makeup that looks like it isn't there, right? <laughs> yeah, and to do your hair and stuff. I mean, I've personally, I've tried to figure out how to put on makeup before. <laughs> it just doesn't work very well for me. And it's a real ordeal. It's like, <laughs> it's a big chunk of effort so even if i look slightly worse without it i'm usually not going to put it on but you know it's just not worth it it's amazing because i think there's some real cognitive dissonance here in society because these standards where they really should be held is in a hospital like your doctor should look amazing yeah that's life or death (laughs) okay yeah like and if they don't you fire them. Don't pay them a dime. You know? <laughs> what do you want a short little Indian man to, yeah. to serve you for? Well, really, I for mean, God's you got sakes, it should be, you know, the, you Hefner. The dietician walks in weighing 300 pounds. It's like, wait a minute, what are you going to tell me? Well, you know? that's a good point. Then it's just kind of hypocrisy. But we're short on time. So, Mark, I want to I want you to have your tips for uh Hitting on servers. All right. Consider that I haven't dated in 10 years. Um, so, you know, but whatever. But this is co- corroborated by Derek J. Uh, indeed. So one thing that I, I would do if I, you know, in the rare circumstance that I wanted to actually meet a server, um, you don't have to be successful too many times. You just have to be willing to go up to bat. Um, was I would leave something of mild value at the table. And this would be at a restaurant where you intend to come back. I mean, you should know who it is. I'm not saying you should just be hitting on somebody you've never met before. I think you should know who you're hitting on. But if you leave something then and they like you, they're liable to hold on to it rather than tossing it in the, uh, um, you know, just the lost and found. Um, the two times okay, that I have... talking about a tip. No, I'm talking about like a pen, uh, a pen. Um, I, I used to carry around oh. like mildly expensive pens, like $5 pens that looked good. And the one of the reasons I'd have them is because I'd have customers sign contracts. The other reason I'd have it would be if I leave this here, I'm only losing five bucks. Um, and then I'll know whether or not this uh, this woman is interested in me or, or not. Another thing is a man in a tie is a difficult thing for um, women to sort of ignore. There you have it. Leave something at the table and wear a tie. Free Talk Live 855-450-3733. Thanks, Nathan, for the call. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation. Protection. Success. Incorporate your business. L-L-C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation protection. 
Action Success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. If you need to say happy birthday, happy anniversary, thank you, or simply I'm thinking of you, ProFlowers.com is the key. ProFlowers has stunning bouquets, like the best-selling 100 blooms for $19.99. Plus, ProFlowers will include a glass vase for free. Sending someone a wonderful surprise of beautiful flowers sent fresh from the field is easy. Choose the bouquet you like, pick the delivery date, and each order is 100% guaranteed. Plus, all bouquets from Pro Flowers are guaranteed to last at least seven full days. Beautiful, fragrant flowers, picked fresh and sent to your loved one for lasting enjoyment. To get this incredible savings and send someone 100 gorgeous blooms with a free vase for $19.99, Go to proflowers.com, click the blue microphone in the top right corner, and enter code PLOW. That's proflowers.com. Click the mic and enter code P-L-O-W. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenevention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenevention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenevention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Toll House Refrigerated Cookie Dough. Who would you bake some love for? Find fun and easy baking ideas at tollhouse.com. Kids love doing arts and crafts projects, especially when you join in. Try channeling all that artistic energy into the kitchen and bake up some creative treats together. Think of your art supplies as the frosting, sprinkles, and decorating gels, and use cookies or cupcakes as your canvas. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome back. It's the live Sunday night edition at 855-450-3733. That is the ProXPN toll-free call-in number where you can bring up anything that's on your mind. And it's Stephanie with you. And Brian. And Mark. And uh, we do have a call on Skype, but first, no, okay, well, <laughs> no, but first, we're going right to Skype where Andy is on the line with us. Hey, Andy, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how you doing? Doing great tonight. What's on your mind? Well, um, I listen to you guys a lot, and I know you go... Uh, and talked a lot about how government controls people. And yeah. I agree with you, you know, a lot on that. But I never really hear you talk about religion and how that controls people and how that takes away people's freedoms. And- <laughs> oh, I <laughs> totally agree You just haven't been you. listening. When did you start listening to the show? Uh, well, no, I just tuned in now, actually. So. Oh, I mean, like, when did you first hear Free Talk oh, Live? Oh, about, about four months ago. Well, uh, you know, there we've been doing the Sunday show for about three is it four years or three years? Four years now, right? Four years. We're in our yeah, fourth year. For the Sunday show, yes. Doing the Sunday show. And, um, you know, for, for quite a while, um, especially me and especially Brian, when he joined the show, got a lot of heat because we did spend a ton of time talking about religion and how, um, you know, we really do agree with you that it... Um, he didn't make that claim. 
He's just said he wants to talk about it. He doesn't make the claim that, in fact, okay, religion well, takes... Andy, I've made an assumption there. Are, do you agree with that statement that religion controls people? Well, for example, the Bible has over 600 uh, things in it that says you're not supposed to be doing, and if people believe that and <laughs> abide by it, then, yeah, it's controlling. Well, I think the Bible is government. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, if you the, the, the Old Testament, a good portion of it is called the law. Um, I mean, it is. <laughs> and to think that somehow that book managed to escape all the rulers and petty uh, priests, um, you know, somehow or another, not a word was ever changed throughout. It was written by God and never changed. Well, they didn't have to change it because the rules just didn't apply to them. It's just like government officials or who don't get punished you know, for breaking the law. But come on, um, the, priests the guy who says that uh, around the laws of religion. The guy who says I don't like the way pork tastes, so nobody can eat it. I mean, come on, that guy's you know, <laughs> like that's an obvious change to the law. Whoa, whoa, no, those, those shrimp are weird looking. Nobody's eating that crap. And <laughs> well, well, Andy, I I would say personally, I completely agree with you. I do think religion is a controlling thing. There's not much difference between hell and jail, in my opinion. It's kind of a difference of degrees. I think Brian's probably of that opinion too, and. You know, the the fact is the three of us here on this show tonight were damaged by religion. I would say Mark is nodding his head oh, here. Oh, yes. I am <laughs> like, thoroughly. Yeah. The, 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 I went to Christian school for nine years. I was a Sunday school teacher, uh, vacation Bible school, um, you know, the whole, the whole deal. And when you, you can only be threatened with eternal damnation for doing something wrong for so long uh, yeah. before it you know, just twist your little mind up. Yeah. Or I was told I was being punished just because I was born female, which I didn't even do anything wrong because of that. But yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. It really does I was taught warp that your little being mind. Female, the only thing that you got, the only bad gig for being female was that pain and childbirth. And that did seem undeniable, right? Like right, there's pain that, and childbirth. That was the punishment for, oh, and also menstrual cramps. But that was- the, I don't remember that part. Well, um, that, that got taught to me. But anyway, that was the punishment for Eve's original sin because, you know- Women are bad. They tempted man into eating the apple or whatever. So it was a quince. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it, it, it's tough to like with the state. It's very easy to talk about it because it has set laws. Of course, it breaks them all the time. But it has set laws that you can point to and say, "Hey, they're being uh, contradictory." With, uh, in particular, Christianity, that becomes very difficult to do because everybody seems to have a completely different version of Christianity, even though there's only one truth. <laughs> and so it, it becomes, it's a lot more difficult to really, you know, like generally when you argue with a lot of religious people, they, they tend to like to move the goalpost, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so, but, but, is, but Andy, I'm, I do hear you. I mean, it, it is absolutely, like you said, I, I think it's, it is a very controlling facet of one's life. And if your purpose in life, and I think this is the purpose of life is to be happy religion. And I had been a part of two of them. I was raised originally Jewish and uh, then my parents converted to Christianity. And both of those are completely against any semblance of what I could call happiness for myself, for my own desire, because both of those religions are all about pleasing God and not yourself. Okay? There's a lot of and, emphasis on sacrifice, yes. right? You should do what yeah. other people tell you to do. And yeah. But as far as taking freedom away, uh, a religion is something one chooses. You can walk no, away from your children. Your children don't choose it. Uh, if they're subjected to it. And also, I was going to say, it's undeniable that religious influences creep into culture. Even if you could say like, well, yeah, 75% of Americans are Christian, but not everybody's Christian. Okay, that's true. However, uh, there are a lot of laws on the books that are majorly influenced by or based on religion. Well, and even Richard Dawkins would say we're cultural Christians. Uh, and yeah, I think that's I think accurate. that's totally true. You I know, mean, look at the attitudes toward sex and virginity and sex education in America. Look at the attitudes toward alcohol, even things like gambling or like the way that the law treats it. It's totally religious influenced. And that is codified in law that everybody doesn't have a choice to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things you just said there that's, uh, you know, I agree. Uh, the fact that, you know, when you're indoctrinated as a child, you don't have a choice really i mean you know they're, they're almost brainwashing you to believe something and uh you know when you grow up and and are afraid by society to you know i mean if you speak up against it it, it it's like you know you you shun the, you know people look at you and go oh what's wrong with you you know you, you don't believe and it's just like it's forced on you constantly we have in god we trust on our money i mean you know it's just 
all the time. It's just religion everywhere. I mean, and no one's allowed to talk up about it and say, hey, you know, when you talk up about the government, it, it's normal. Everybody has an opinion about the government. But Well, my son's you know. six years old. And at this point, the only gods that he understands are the ones that he's seen in Marvel movies. Um, like, you know, he doesn't consider Thor a god as much as he consider gods to be superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I, you know, my opinion there is is that he's not old enough to have a conversation about God. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't understand. He he couldn't understand the concept of sort of an abstract being existing in the spiritual world. So I wouldn't subject him to you know, hey, we're gonna we're gonna do a lot of things to uh, you know sort of indoctrinate you before you have a chance to decide for yourself. I think he should be able to make those decisions when he starts to be an adult, and I figure that starts about twelve or something like that. He can begin to make those decisions for himself, and he should be able to look at all the other options or the lack of an option, whatever it might be. No, I agree with you on that, but most people don't. I mean, yeah. you know, and that's the I problem. guess they're scared of the decisions their kids will make. Yeah, yeah, you know, but it's it's almost like a disease, and it's just not going to stop if it keeps, you know, generation after generation, it, it keeps being fed into, you know, young children. Yeah, wasn't them. it? Who was it that called religion a virus of the mind? That was uh, maybe Bertrand Russell or something like that, but it, it really is. Um, well, it's funny when we do talk about it. Oftentimes, we'll get criticism, particularly. We're going to get heat after this. Fr- I'm yeah, sure. from Christians, mm-hmm. and I always found this to be th- it's them showing their own contradiction. So I know my Bible really freaking well, okay, and it's very clear. I think First uh, Peter chapter three, where it says, "Always be ready to defend your faith." Okay, and that's saying you've got to be able to talk about this hope that's inside of you, right, which is faith. And then also 2 Timothy chapter 3 says you will be persecuted because of your faith, as in people are going to talk crap. Well, And it's an expectation. And then when you do it, when you ask them to defend their faith, or if you talk crap about them, they say, how dare you do that? I'm a Christian. No, wait a minute. The New Testament says that's what you have to deal with. This is part of your faith, sir. Mm-hmm. And they, it blows my mind that they, they don't have a right to complain. Their book says we can do that. Well, that's exactly why I called because, you know, I never hear you guys talking about it. And I think it's one of the major issues on, on freedom. And, uh, you know, they keep saying that we have to, you know, respect their beliefs. And I don't, I don't see that because if you believe something without evidence— you know, what if I believe two plus two equals five? I mean, I would hope someone would speak up and say, hey, I don't respect that. You know? well, one of the things that happens, yeah. Andy, is I'm a theist and uh, both Brian and Stephanie are atheists. And at some point or another, if we talk about it long enough, we will devolve into this, uh, you know, conversation that we've had far too many times <laughs> as to, uh, you know, whether or not God's, God exists and can you prove it and that kind of thing. And Andy, go back like two years and just a, listen to all the Sunday shows and you'll get your wish. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, okay. Yeah, because, you know, recently I haven't heard, but I think it should be spoken up. You know, people are afraid to talk about it for some reason. And, Andy, you know, because, yeah, I, it's because it's I scary. think we are afraid to talk it, about it. We are. I think that like, free, here on Free Talk Live. We absolutely get um, crap for it when we talk about it. We're, we're which afraid. is against their faith. <laughs> yeah. we're, well, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's, it's different Andy, people thank, have different faiths. Andy, thank you for calling in tonight. Yeah. I appreciate sure. it. And I hear you. I'm with you there. So thank you. But I think that we have received so much uh, pushback in, in the past that mostly we talk about the ideas of liberty and kind of leave the, uh, you know, anything else having to do with religion out of it. But, you know, we've got our beliefs on the subject. 855-450-3733. Coming up in Hour 3, we are going to talk about drones and how they are not helping national security, but perhaps when threatening it. hardwood mills have excess flooring to sell, there's only one place they go. Lumber Liquidators, America's number one specialty retailer of wood flooring. This week, get amazing deals like gorgeous three-quarter inch, solid, pre-finished Brazilian cherry hardwood for only $2.99 per square foot. Or quick-click strand bamboo for 37% less than other stores. Plus, get first quality laminate flooring for $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find your local store. Special 12-month financing is available. Hurry, these deals end Tuesday. 
Do you remember when summer road trips meant loading up the family in the car and playing hours of I Spy and License Plate Bingo? I found Alaska. America's Best Value Inn invites you to share stories and photos from memorable summer trips now through September 15th at americasbestvalueinn.com. You'll be entered for a chance to win free stays at any of our 1,000 hotels, gift certificates from TA and Petro Stopping Centers, and other fun prizes. Share your memories and make your own this summer at America's Best Value Inn. I Spy and ABVI. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, July 27th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.73 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,308 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $596. Reuters reports a federal judge on Saturday overturned Washington, D.C.'s ban on carrying handguns outside of the home, saying it was unconstitutional. Judge Frederick Scullin wrote in his opinion, There is no longer any basis on which the court can conclude that the District of Columbia's total ban on the public carrying of ready-to-use handguns outside of the home is constitutional under any level of scrutiny. He added, Therefore, the court finds that the District of Columbia's complete ban on carrying of handguns guns in public is unconstitutional. The court ordered the city to allow residents to carry handguns outside of their homes and to let non-residents carry them as well. Scullin made the ruling in the case of Palmer et al. v. District of Columbia et al., which had been dragging on for five years. In 2008, the Supreme Court struck down D.C.'s all-out ban on handguns on the basis that it violated the right to bear arms, supposedly guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution's Second Amendment. An appeals court in 20 11 required handguns to be registered. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports Israel extended its particular ceasefire in the Gaza Strip, continuing their ground invasion of the tiny Palestinian enclave, but somewhat limiting the number of air and artillery strikes against civilian areas for an additional 24 hours. Hamas has rejected the unilateral extension, however, saying they did not agree to any such extensions of the pause and saying that no ceasefire would be valid without a withdrawal of invasion forces and allowing civilians to return to their homes. What? if anything the rejection means remains unclear but it will likely not be welcomed in gaza as even though the partial pause isn't stopping the attacks on civilians it is giving them a brief opportunity to look for food and water ultimately hamas says they don't want brief pauses but a settlement of the war that ends years of israeli blockade that is certainly an ideal goal but in the interim it is primarily gaza civilians not hamas which is taking the brunt of the fighting 
In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. That's GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. USA Today reports, a top aide for President Obama said it's possible that Obama could be impeached by the Republican-controlled House of Representatives. House Speaker John Boehner's decision to proceed with a lawsuit against the president has opened the door to the third presidential impeachment in the nation's history, according to senior advisor Dan Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer told reporters at a Friday breakfast sponsored by the Christian Science Monitor, impeachment is a very serious thing that has been bandied about by the recent Republican vice presidential nominee and others in very unserious serious ways. We take it very seriously, and I don't think it would be a good thing. Pfeiffer was quick to add that no one has alleged anything that is even six universes from what is generally considered to be an impeachable offense. A CNN ORC poll released on Friday shows that 35% of Americans favor impeachment, which is about the same support for efforts to impeach President Bill Clinton and George W. Bush. Pfeiffer noted that a majority of Republicans, 57%, favored impeaching Obama. Impeachment is the bringing of charges against a president or federal judge by the House of Representatives. A president or judge can only be removed after a trial on those charges by the Senate. Speaker of the House John Boehner has chosen a less dramatic approach with a plan to sue Obama over his decision to delay enforcement of a provision in the Affordable Care Act requiring employers to provide health insurance. That plan passed the House Rules Committee on Thursday, clearing the way for a vote on the House floor. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. It's really not creepy to have little, little kids mindlessly recite this anthem every day and pledge their life to a God. good kids now come and get your riddle one This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show and we're kicking off the third hour of tonight's program. Free Talk Live is a show where you can call about anything that's on your mind. And we are live tonight. We being me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. The number to call if you have something you want to bring up tonight is 855-450-3733 or on Skype at lrn.fm. And uh, we do have a phone call on the line. Paul is listening in Arkansas. Hey, Paul, you're on Free Talk Live. Yes, and I've been on hold for a while, but that's okay. It's a good way to get people uh, off balance a little bit. Well, Paul, uh, I, I, yeah. I saw you called in at the big top of the hour. We do have a news break that's eight minutes, so I don't think you're on hold for too long. Oh, but I, know, I know. Go ahead know. with your thoughts. Uh, you uh, got, let's see, one theist and two atheists there. Is that right? That's correct. And and one prophet, I guess, because you said you knew somebody would call in. Every time somebody would call in, well, there you go. Um, somebody <laughs> asked about proof for God. Somebody asked about proof for God. Yes. Go ahead. Give us proof for God. Hello? Okay. Well, here's just some evidence. I mean, you can't you can't prove uh, certain things to blind people. You know. I mean, just I'm, I don't mean I'm not meaning that as an insult. Uh, but I mean, you can tell them about things, but. They they can never verify it for themselves. Uh, I'll give you some evidence. 
Uh, the book of Daniel figured by most have been, been written in the year 536 oh. BC. Is this um, is this proof scholars, for the existence of a, of the Christian God or the existence of just simply a higher power? <laughs> well, uh, it is it, uh, proof that somebody at least 200 years in advance, because the most liberal scholars say it was written you know, some 200 years before Jesus appeared. Uh, he, and the thing is, they're, they're dating it from the time of Daniel, and most, I, I, well, more conservative scholars say the book of Daniel was written in the time of Daniel. Uh, and at least, even if you take the later date of the book, which claims to have been written around 536 B.C., I mean, the later date is, they say it's like 200 B.C., so 180-something, I don't know. Uh, but if you take the earlier date, they still predicted from the time of a decree 300 years before that the anointed one would appear. That was Cyrus. 490 years later. 400, yeah, 490 years later. And it just so happens that's about the time Jesus appeared in the synagogue and read half of Isaiah 61. And nobody paid a lick of attention to him. Uh, Don't Paul. go with what you know. Hear me, hear, hear me out. The reason that no one paid attention to him, they say, well, isn't that Joseph and Mary's boy, all this starting off? But when he read it, he read it incorrectly, intentionally. He stopped in the middle of the reading for that day and sat down. At that point, the eyes of everyone were fixed upon him because he said, today this prophecy has been fulfilled in your hearing. Okay, uh, Paul, I, Paul, I want to... Let's, let's have Brian yeah, respond. Yeah, Paul, okay. I, you know what? I'm gonna g I'll give you this one, that I agree, and I am an atheist, that the book of Daniel is very strange at how good it is at predicting the future for a lot of things. There's the, the beasts, the statue that Nebuchadnezzar dreams about. Uh, those do seem to be creepily accurate in their depictions. Yeah, and, and it, okay, now I, I totally not, agree with you there, but... It, oh, not, I'm sorry. No, I agree with you there, but for, for me, that's not enough. Uh, you, you know, that, that, that one thing is not enough. I'm not saying there aren't others. Okay, but I I, I will okay. give you okay. that. My point is that this atheist will tell you that, yes, the book of Daniel is really incredible in its predictive power. But uh, there's a lot of comparisons between All Jesus right. and other sort of uh, savior gods out there. I mean, Osiris is a good example, Apollo. Oh, I mean, Adonis, right, uh, the, Mithras. The, the, the sure, Mithras, the, the, the birthday is the same. Um, the uh, There's so I'm many things that the disciples, hold on. Ability. What's that? Okay. What? I'm, I'm waiting to hear some prediction that was made that was similar to the book of Daniel. Uh, between what? Uh, any, anything that, that lends... You can talk about rising gods and all these pagan, you know, th and the similarities to the... What I said, the one true God. Well, okay. But if you want to if you want to whip out the Bible, I have the clincher for the Bible, okay? The Bible is okay. a mistranslation of the protagonist's name they it says in there it has a magic spell believe on my name and ye shall be saved right like that's it his name isn't jesus it's yaheshua so therefore if the magic spell isn't uh enacted properly then wait 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 wait, wait. wait i'm not done with spell. my i'm not done with my explanation i know that this is really confronting for you but you see now the the no. the, the really important part is is that it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not it matters whether I believe it or not, because a fair and just God, that's what you're going to claim your just, your God is, would not send his child to eternal hell for a mistranslated book. Now, I believe it's mistranslated. It doesn't matter if you believe it. Now, the question is, is your God fair and just, and will he send me to hell? i tell you what. Well... My short answer would be yes. Then your God sucks. We don't read, I we hope your your God must be the king of hell. What if he's saying that your God, <laughs> yes, God is fair and just? Okay. <laughs> if he's going to send me to hell, what, then I need to the be, answer we to need what some is clarification yes. here. <laughs> is he sending me to hell? He's framing the question, which he's already asked people a hundred times and knows the answer to. 
Yeah, he'd be a good lawyer, by the way, on that. No, look, uh, look, this is the, really the reason I'm not a Christian. Jesus. Well, actually, I've had several reasons, but this is really you. sort of it. The The fact is, is that Yahushua was Jesus' name, and then you've got Yeshua. a translation. If I go to Greece, they're not going to necessarily call me Marcos. My name's Mark. Uh, yeah, well, you know, the name Jesus, uh, you know, if people call upon the name, close, you know, the, cl the closest name they know, that, you know, they know it's, it's not so much the name that has the power, although there is truth to that. It's the show isn't long enough. I'm not sure how long well, you go. But this no, is we're real short on enough. time, Paul. So I just uh, want to ask you one, one last question. One, one, more thing, one more thing to look at. It, it could be, could be, okay, let's say, I'll say my God's real, but he's a real horse's rear end, okay? Uh, uh, just for your sake of argument. Uh, look up the Torah code. I mean, the Bible code, there's really something to it. There's a watermark. If you know anything about old books, and stuff, you hold up the paper and you can see there's a mark there, and you can tell if, some, if something's original. Uh, look up the Torah code in the Bible code material. There's no way a human being could have done that in the Hebrew scrolls. Uh, well, um, I, I will. I, I, I know what you're talking about, Paul. I don't. Uh, I, I do know what he's <laughs> yeah. talking about. But, but I'm going to go to hell because I don't know. No. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> Hell. Can't do it today. Well, I was going to say that the original Bible code book, uh, and I forget the name of the author, but he actually had to write the Bible code too because the predictions that he extracted from the Bible yeah, code ended up being Drosen wrong. Wasn't the first. Michael Drosen was not the first one. Okay. It's a long way off from it. All right, Paul. Uh, what, Paul, one last can... question for you. Okay. Um, do you have any evidence that doesn't depend on the Bible? Yeah, I see God in, in reality. Like I, like I said, <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you what, a, a personal vision, but hey, I'm crazy in your book, so it doesn't really matter, does it? I, I don't think you're crazy. I think that, uh, and I think your vision is no, as important but, for you but, as but it I, is. It's, I, I, but it's yours. I'll talk to you some other time off air even, but that's okay. Well, uh, we're, uh, I'm unsavable, I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah I think I think we're heathens, their, Paul. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. For them, <laughs> Thanks for calling in tonight, yeah, Paul. <laughs> this is Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733 here on Free Talk Live. You can call and bring up anything. Uh, you know, uh, admittedly, it, the Bible does actually in itself say Paul, not the caller, but Paul the Apostle, actually says that you, if you don't accept the Bible, you don't have an excuse because the proof is all around you. And he said the proof is in nature, which I think is what Mark was saying. Well, that's what I see for myself. I'm not discounting uh, the existence of God. I'm uh, discounting the idea of, you know, this Bible that has it's a bunch of chapters cobbled together from, you know, some vote in 300 A.D. How is that the word of God? There's lots of old books. 855-450-3733. Coming up, drones. I hope. Free Talk Live. Rising gas prices taking a bite out of your travel budget? Here's something to chew on. You can get more mileage from your travel dollar by staying at America's Best Value Inn, where you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, HBO, and internet at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Plus, join our free value club for room discounts, upgrades, and other instant rewards. Visit AmericasBestValueInn.com. With value in our name, you know you're getting a great deal. Yum. When leading hardwood mills have excess flooring to sell, there's only one place they go. Lumber Liquidators, America's number one specialty retailer of wood flooring. This week, get amazing deals like gorgeous three-quarter inch, solid, pre-finished Brazilian cherry hardwood for only $2.99 per square foot. Or quick-click strand bamboo for 37% less than other stores. Plus, get first quality laminate flooring for $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find your local store. Special 12-month financing is available. Hurry, these deals end Tuesday. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, July 25th, 2014, gold opened at 1295.60. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1342.71, 671.35 for half ounce, or 335.68 for a quarter ounce. That's 1342.71, 671.35, and 335.68. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. 
Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. I recently signed up for one of these self-defense classes and brought along a camera crew to watch. Take a good look at this class instructor. Thank you very much. Boy, was he smooth. He tried to butter us up with flowery compliments like, good work, nice try. But don't worry, folks, I wasn't letting my guard down for one second. Maybe he wasn't planning to attack me at all, but he could potentially plan to attack me at some point, and that left only one option. Take him out first. This is him, this is the guy. My quarry approached, and when the moment was right, I struck. I knew he'd be able to counter my every move if I just did what he had taught me, so instead, I did exactly the opposite. I beat him with a baseball bat. I am Shelby Cross! Do not ever attack me! Now, folks, I acknowledge that this man may have never been a threat, but a potential threat is just as dangerous as a real one. I don't play games with my life, and neither should you, and that's it. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. The three heathens uh, on the air. (laughs) Live from 7 to 10 Eastern time, seven days a week for the last, like, four or five years? Some incredible amount of time. Yeah. um, And, well, Free Talk Live as a show has been on the air before Brian and I joined the crew for over a decade. Yeah. But if you want to catch more of this heathen, you can go to SovereignTech.com. That's S-O-V-R-Y-N, as in my last name, Brian Sovereign. Uh, SovereignTech.com. And uh, you can actually, I do often, in fact, just this past week, I talked about the movie Noah. And how Christians <laughs> and how did sat- not... How you thought it was a satanic film. It is a film. satanic film. It, it's totally Gnostic. It's loaded with Gnosticism and Kabbalah. And it's and Focus on the Family, one of the largest Christian groups in the United States, said the movie was fantastic. And well, it literally, this movie, I'm giving it away. Spoiler alert, folks. Turn off your radio. Satan says he did everything to help mankind, and Noah says he agreed. There you go, folks. You heard it first. Go to SovereignTech.com to hear Brian's podcast. I, Brian, I've, I've long said you should start your own Bible podcast, but you seem reluctant to do it. Well, that's I just because I'm the why. only person that's ever read against heresies by Arrhenius in the second century. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, Christians, guess what? You're in your second century again. Go I don't ahead. know what that means. That, Me neither. <laughs> well, they Just probably don't on. know either, so that's fine. <laughs> I, I think it's, but but I mean, the devil was God's tool in Job. Um, you know, that God and the devil are talking about this guy, what righteous man Job, and essentially sort of gambling back and forth, uh, betting on whether or not you can, you know, uh, do this bad thing to him, do that bad thing to him. I'll bet he'll he'll deny you then. But I mean, essentially at that point, God's using Satan as his tool. Oh, sure. Well, actually, uh, that was one of the hardest things for me to accept when I was becoming an atheist was, uh, or one of the things that led me to atheism was the fact that uh, in Ephesians chapter one, uh, the Apostle Paul is very clear that everything, like everything's going according to plan. And so that means that Satan was supposed to do what he was supposed to do. Eve was supposed to do what she was supposed to do. All this stuff was the plan. And so to condemn 
uh, you know, Satan as a bad guy is uh, ridiculous because he was just doing what he was told. Well, uh, or made for Satan's uh, role really doesn't. I guess I, I just don't have a lot of emotional attachment to what happens to Satan. But sure, everybody. He's my dad, so I worry. Who's gone to hell? Atheists love to, to call forth <laughs> Satan. It's ridiculous. Um, but I haven't done that. My Brian loving, just likes to do. That. My loving Father God has uh, planned the damnation of you know untold millions of my brethren since Jesus was uh, crucified on the cross. If this is his plan, we know people have gone to hell. God therefore planned their deaths and their eternal damnation. I find that very disturbing. Now, if I'm, I'm a universalist, is the if, if people use this terminology. If there's a heaven, I don't believe that a, a fair and just and loving God's going to send his children any place but there. And the Bible's only really clear about hell being for, for demons anyway. So anyway, I don't know how we uh, got, got on this uh, this topic. What my intention was to tell you about was <laughs> Freedom's Phoenix. Speaking, speaking of fiery birds from the depths, <laughs> freedomsphoenix.com is a news aggregation site where you can get liberty-oriented news a fantastic amount of it and it's really great if you want to see the liberty oriented news before your friends and family go sign up for their daily dispatch at freedoms with an s phoenix.com it uh, re redefining the lines of propaganda and the relationship that we have with a course of government freedomsphoenix.com now would you like me to talk about something else that flies I would, yeah, but at first I want to give out the number 855-450-3733 are the Pro XPN toll-free call-in lines, or you can call us on Skype at lrn.fm. Now, Brian, let's talk about drones. Let's fly! Yeah, this is uh, an opinion piece from Al Jazeera America, and so a lot of people would probably say, ooh, consider that source. Um, I think it's a great news uh, source. I Al love it. Al Jazeera it's one of my, is awesome. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Um, and in fact, the government, the U.S. government, seems to be kind of afraid of Al Jazeera. And I mean, honestly, if the government's afraid of it, it's probably because they're telling the truth, and they're delivering some transparency of thought. So You know, if you want critiques on your government and your lifestyle, the best place to get it isn't domestically. Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> the best place is to get it from abroad. Now, I don't think I necessarily dr trust um, uh, Al Jazeera to give me fair and just news no, on no. Ka Qatar or Cater or whatever the right. heck they pronounce it. Um, and I don't uh, expect RT or Russia Today, formerly Russia Today, to give me fair news about what's going on in Ukraine and um, Russia. I don't expect that. But I mean, you you look at your news sources. If you want a good, if you want good critiques, look at the foreign press. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we have drone attacks undermine national security, and this is by Chase Madar. Uh, drone blowback is real. Over the past five years, terrorists have attempted serious attacks on American soil that were motivated in part by U.S. drone strikes abroad. We know this because the apprehended terrorists have been loud and clear about their motives, as Pakistani-born Fazil Shahad, uh, whose car bomb failed to explode in Times Square in May 2010, said uh, at his arraignment, until the hour the U.S. pulls its forces from Iraq and Afghanistan and stops the drone strikes in Somalia and Yemen in Pakistan and stops the occupation of Muslim lands, we will be attacking the U.S. The drone hits in Afghanistan and Iraq, they don't see children. They kill women, children. They kill everybody. Oh, that much is the truth. I mean, yes. there's no denying that. Um, they kill I, first responders because they do these double strikes. The double tap, yeah. yeah. And and oftentimes what you'll see, you know, the, the claims is, is that the terrorists hide among women and children, so of course we kill women and children. Well, you know, I mean, that's really ridiculous. I don't know if they're terrorists, if they're on their own land um, trying to influence their government in whatever way. And try to imagine what it would be like for you. What would you do if there was some foreign power that was attempting to put in place, I don't know, a king or a dictator. Yemen has a dictator. Uh, Saudi Arabia has got a king. The U.S. backs both of them. Um, you know, what would, what would you do? What, I mean, would you be brave enough to stand up against this ex incredibly powerful enemy? Would you do something to catch the attention and try to drive them out of your land? Because that's all these people are trying to do. I don't think that they're going to set up good or just governments. And I find their religion frightening. Right. At least their practice of their religion frightening. But, uh, 
you know, I, they, I'm sure they feel the same way about uh, the, our practice, my practice of my religion. The best thing to do is just get out of their countries, let them figure out the equilibrium as best they can. If they fit, figure out a good equilibrium, do business with them. If they figure out a bad one, leave them alone until they figure out a good one. Sure. I mean, just picture a Canadian drone flying over Montana or something. I mean, I think people would freak out. I, th- I Really, I think they'd see a Canadian or picture a British drone, something from overseas. Well, I don't think people would accept it. I think How would they know the if Mexican it was one. a British drone, though? <laughs> well, maybe it'd have a nice, like, big uh, you know, Union, Union Jack, and Jack uh, <laughs> flying off the back or something. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean? I don't think people would, would gel with it. In fact, in the, in, our, in the United States alone, people in the U.S. citizens, quote-unquote, won't accept government drones. Flying overhead. They won't even accept, like, real estate drones sometimes. So why is it okay for U.S. drones to be flying overhead in other countries if in the U.S. Americans won't allow for it? It's Oh, it's a contradiction. I think just nobody thinks about that. I I don't really think they're... they I don't think the average American feels too connected with the average person in the Middle East. Like, they don't... I, I don't know that they really think of them as human beings on average well and i think a lot of that is a lot of americans don't travel abroad to see that everybody guess what we're all human beings well we have a big beautiful country here in the united states and i think that's one of the reasons people don't uh, well that and the government makes it hard to leave yeah that's true too 855-450-3733 drones what do you think it's free talk live the sunday show this is dan pillett do you owe the irs money you can't pay are tax debts crippling you i've defended people from the irs for over 30 years I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Good people need help. The Homeowners Association said we had weeds and fined us $25. We told them they had the wrong house. They said if we didn't pay it, they'd file a lien. Our attorney demanded photographs, witnesses, and told them if they couldn't provide this, they must cease and desist. Issue solved. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. I'm Mark Stevens of the No Stay Project. And are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're only helping the government. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, spread it. So get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Fact. The new NSA data center in Utah requires 1.7 million gallons of water every single day to operate. Billions of Fourth Amendment violations need massive computers and the water to cool them. 
That water is being supplied by the state of Utah. Fact, there's absolutely nothing in the Constitution which requires your state to help the feds violate your rights. Our message to Utah? Turn it off. No water equals no NSA data center. Visit offnow.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. You are listening to Free Talk Live, the live Sunday night show. Tonight it's me, Stephanie, with you. And Brian. And Mark. You can call in at 855-450-3733. We're talking about drones, but you can bring up anything that's on your mind. You can get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. There we give away a pound of the best of the best coffee. It's BuzzBox coffee. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica beans. And that organic certification, it's, it's kind of important when it comes to coffee because coffee is among the most absorbent crops on the planet. So when you're... You know, coffee's being grown in a third world country where maybe they don't have the same rules as far as pesticide goes and don't have an outlawed, outlawed leaded gas. Um, it could be a concern of yours. But one thing that BuzzBox does that other companies don't do is, is they're very concerned about, uh, about giving back. So not only do they um, employ their... Uh, their coffee growers through a co-op that allows uh, you know poor people to to own their own little coffee farm but they give back in a myriad of other ways um, you know so 10% of what you give what what your purchase price is goes to charity it's buzzbox and you can get your free pound at coffee.freetalklive.com all right and let's go to the phones mac is on the line from calling from Saudi Arabia hey mac are you with us yes i am can you hear me yeah, you're coming in great. Uh, what did you want to talk about tonight? Oh, well, last night the fellows were talking about uh, police state, and they kept focusing on the actual police, the guys in uniform. And and while that's a good thing to discuss, I think that the um, uh, the, the hallmarks of a police state are are more an overarching national government. And I might be wrong about this. I might come off sounding like a total idiot, but it seems to me that it's an overarching national government with an overly powerful executive. Um, and I, I travel the world as part of my job. And I've been, I'm in Saudi Arabia now. I've been to several places in Africa where, you know, the police and the military, you almost can't differentiate between them. And they go around literally beating up people uh, that are, Countries where they'll spy, like they'll put government workers in civilian jobs to to, to listen to see if people are uh, talking bad about the government and stuff, and they get hauled away in black vans and everything. Wow. Uh, yeah. I think the United States is definitely a police state, but I think, uh, at, at, and you'll probably agree with this, but it's a lot more subtle of a police state. Yeah, we do have NSA spying, and yeah, we do have several different national police forces. Um but I, I think that instead of focusing on the, the, the guys in blue, I think that the focus when talking about police states should be more at the national level. Do you guys agree with that? Well, I think that I, I like your definition of a police state. It's fine. I, I think yeah. I'll take any definition of a and, police state. And I think the U.S. definitely is ruling with a velvet glove. Right. I you think know, you, no doubt. one thing's for certain, and uh, we have never uh, disagreed with here on Free Talk Live, and it's obvious because Free Talk Live exists, is that in the United States, you have the right to complain. Um, you know, I, I don't think Americans would allow their government to not allow the uh, uh, sort of complaints against government. Well, I think we're a ways off before Americans say, you know, that freedom of speech thing, we just don't need that. So, uh, you know, I mean, I, it, I think it's built in that if we're going to have a police state, it's going to need to look different than many of these sort of banana republics or that sort of thing. Right. And well, you know, one thing, though, that, that sort of makes me think about that I've had many people, I mean, mostly online, of course, uh, because of my line of work, most of the communication I do with other human beings is online. Um, I, I've been told, you know, we shouldn't have a right of 
free speech to allow people like you to say the things that you say. I mean, I've been told that probably hundreds of times. And it kind of uh, makes me think about what Orwell said once, uh, and I, I can't quote him, but he said something about uh, the, the oppression is more lateral than it is top down. You know, the, mm. the oppression, the, the police doesn't need to have eyes everywhere uh, from the top down because they have, have eyes everywhere laterally. People, you know, just ordinary people like you and me sort of looking at, at each other. You know yeah, I mean? if you see oh, something, yeah, say yeah, something, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, stitch lines. The, right. the IRS gives bounties for, you know, if, if you snitch on someone who's not paying taxes or whatever and they discover that they got can get some money out of them, they'll give the snitch a penalty, uh, not a penalty, a, a reward. Bonus, yeah. yes, commission. Yeah. You know, Mac, I, I'm curious, uh, and you don't have to say which province, or I'd be curious to know what, like, what province, what area you're in in, in Saudi Arabia, um, but I mean, like what... You don't have to reveal it, though. But what uh, what is your experience of people in Saudi Arabia, their reaction? How do they deal with, uh, say, the, the, the police there, the, you know, the authorities? Uh, you know, really, the, the, the regular guys here, the, just the regular folks, they, they kind of hate the government just like we hate ours. Yeah. You know? uh, uh, and, and here they have the religious police, and they also have the, the civil police or whatever you want to call them. Right. Uh, are the um, religious police, th- those and, people are like volunteers though, right? The Wahhabists? You know, I'm not sure exactly how it works because here's why. Because I'm in the eastern province, which is it's just like the Wild West out here. Oh, okay. So I mean, yeah, I, 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 I've been to Demand and go, that's... Uh, 35... Yeah, I was, I was going to say, like in Demand, it was, I agree, like the people were very, like they just didn't trust the authorities <laughs> at all. Right, exactly. And here we just uh, we have Ramadan right now, and uh, Ramadan is, I believe, ending tomorrow night. And um, one one thing is, I, I actually had a guy because you know you'll get fined even if you're not Muslim, even if you're not Saudi, they'll fine you or jail you and or jail you if you don't fast during the day. Well, out here we sort of we don't fast, you know, if, if you don't want to, and. Uh, but if you're in Damam or if you're in one of the major cities, Riyadh or something like that, you have to. And one of these guys actually told me, you know, look, it's not the fault of my religion. Don't blame my religion. This is all government. It's not the religion that's going to throw you in jail. It's the government that's going to throw you in jail. Mm. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Going back to what you said before about um, that the executives really have something to do with the existence of a police state and it's not actually the cops themselves. I kind of agree with that because, you know, the federal government here in the U S is funding like, you know, these bear cats and they're they're They are funding through grants and Homeland security money, the militarization of a lot of localized police departments. And I mean, doesn't in the constitution is, aren't like law enforcement carrying out the executives will basically like it's coming from the executive branch if we're talking about the branches of government, right? Yeah, and, and to me, it's coming in through the back door, just exactly like you said. But like I was in uh, Equatorial Guinea about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And I, from what I understand, it's cleaned up there uh, a lot. It's a lot more, uh, it's a nicer place to be, let's say. But back then, you couldn't tell the difference between a cop or a military man, and both would walk down the streets and just berate people and just ho- start hollering at them with mm-hmm. impunity. I remember one time we were walking around, some woman was just trying to sell something like flowers or something, and a military man just walked up and started hollering at her for some reason. She didn't have the right license or permission or something. I don't know what. And, and yeah, but here, just like you said, yeah, it's coming sort of through the back door. The executive is giving the military they hard really giving them grants, quite so-called warrants, or et cetera. And they're essentially turning the, the thought. And, and I, I'm not. This is not an original thought on my part at all. Heck, a couple of years ago, they had some major police chief, some major city, saying one of the worst things going on these days is that the, the police have become militarized. And he listed five reasons why that was happening, and two of them were uh, both of the reasons that you just mentioned. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're like the town of Keene here where we live. Basically, the federal government offered them, I think the Department of Homeland Security offered them the opportunity to get a Bearcat, which is this uh, armored truck, um, bulletproof truck. Well, what community is going to turn down the opportunity to get a $300,000 bulletproof truck? Yeah, especially when it comes with a shiny new video to market it and it's um, it's 
basically a new toy for them. It's like, well, free truck. Well, I'd like, I'd sure like to have one. Right. <laughs> they didn't offer Free Talk one, Live yeah. a free truck. <laughs> well, you didn't apply for the grant money, Mark. Yeah. I'm not sure they applied. <laughs> I think that they may have come around like a let them know or, you know, Linco, let, uh, the, the company that produces yeah. them, let them know. Hey, we'll help you file the grant. That oh, kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Mac, uh, what le- are you in the petrochemicals industry? Just curious. Uh, I'm, I contract with a petrochemical company, yes. Gotcha. Well, it must be late out there in Saudi Arabia, so we'll let you go. But thank you for calling in. I appreciate your perspective. And this is Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. Is the U.S. a police state? This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. If you need to say happy birthday, happy anniversary, thank you, or simply I'm thinking of you, ProFlowers.com is the key. ProFlowers has stunning bouquets, like the best-selling 100 blooms for $19.99. Plus, ProFlowers will include a glass vase for free. Sending someone a wonderful surprise of beautiful flowers sent fresh from the fields is easy. Choose the bouquet you like, pick the delivery date, and each order is 100% guaranteed. Plus, all bouquets from Pro Flowers are guaranteed to last at least seven full days. Beautiful, fragrant flowers, picked fresh and sent to your loved one for lasting enjoyment. To get this incredible savings and send someone 100 gorgeous blooms with a free vase for $19.99, go to ProFlowers.com, click the blue microphone in the top right corner, and enter code PLOW. That's ProFlowers.com. Click the mic and enter code P-L-O-W. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. (laughs) 
The show is Free Talk Live, and it's the live Sunday edition. We're actually launching into the last segment of tonight's program. I'm not even going to bother to give the phone number out because we're actually loaded up with calls. So um, it's Stephanie with you. And Brian. And Mark. And let's get right into them. But actually, before we do that, Mark, do you want to talk about shop.freetalklive.com? Sure. If you do your online shopping, um, when you do your online shopping, please go through shop.freetalklive.com. We have some major retailers there, including Amazon and Walmart and Newegg. And when you do your shopping there, you get the same prices, the same service you'd normally get. Free Talk Live gets a little bump. So, you know, it, it's it, it's a sizable check um, from these retailers' uh, checks. You guys have a Walmart affiliate link, is that right? Yeah, that's uh, that's, that's new for us. That's very interesting, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, let's go right to the phones. We've got a bunch of calls on the line. Let's talk to Littlefoot listening in New Mexico from the police state of New Mexico, <laughs> says Littlefoot. Hey, Littlefoot, you're on the air. Hey, thank you. I'm calling about a problem we have over here. Totally unconstitutional. Have you heard of it? It's a tactic where the three anonymous people go before a judge, sign papers against a, a fourth person, and then they can be hauled in uh, for a um, 72-hour psych evaluation. Yeah, in Florida they call and this the Baker Act. Not- yeah, I think different states have different versions of this, but yeah, they're all basically involuntary commitment to a medical institution, which can include, you know, psych evaluations and medical exams and in some cases being prescribed drugs, you know, that you may or may not want to take. Did this happen to you? No, and I hope it doesn't knock on wood, yeah. but, you know, the police state, um, well, I've been a peace activist for years. I've, um, I, you know, you talk about, you know, religion and stuff on here. I'm a deprogrammed uh, former son of a preacher. Mm. So, <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. Um, <laughs> thank you. So I go the way of the oldest known philosophy on the planet, which is shamanism. And there are no churches, no priests, no scriptures, no, nothing but a personal, you know, experience. There you go, Littlefoot. Thank you for calling in tonight. I appreciate your thoughts and stay safe out there. Uh, we yeah, New Mexico can be ugly. Remember that the guy who, uh, oh, that was the where multiple the guy... colonoscopies that he was for to find drugs on him. I mean, talk about police state. Yeah, that was multiple an colonoscopies, which are life threatening procedures, uh, yeah. potentially. Yeah, uh, yeah. don't even want to think about that. Yeah. Let's get to the next call. We've got Mike in Iowa. Hey, Mike, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hi. Uh, earlier in the show, you asked if there was proof outside the Bible that God exists. Do you believe in personal experiences as being proof that God exists? I find no, the... I do not. Yahweh? Well, um, it, it, uh, Stephanie doesn't, but I find that uh, the near-death experiences, the way that they're described, I find those as uh, very motivating evidence. You find... Hey, wait, Mark, you find someone else's... You find someone else's personal... So if someone tells you, hey, I had a personal experience... Well, it's it's not like it's not like we're talking about one person saying that. There's a lot of people, and they tend to have sort of similar experiences. I've heard of people seeing going to heaven and seeing streets of gold and stuff, and I tend to be a little skeptical of those. Um, uh, but you know, when, when they see they 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 say they can see their body from the top of the room and that kind of thing. It's very interesting. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, uh, the next comment I wanted to make: uh, Dante's Inferno uh, is a fiction story. We all know it was adopted by the Catholic Church in the 1600s, I believe to frighten people to paying tribute to the priests to keep out of purgatory. Mm. We know that purgatory doesn't exist. And the Hebrew God does not punish people forever with fire and damnation. That's, that's not what he does. It's a myth. I, I actually, you know what, I, I, I am an atheist. Uh, Mike, it's Mike, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, um, I, I, I myself am an atheist, and I agree with you that the Bible does not teach eternal damnation in hell. No, it does not. 
Okay. Those are my two comments. <laughs> okay, Mike. Yeah. Thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Do you want? Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. I well, yeah. we're short on time, but Mike, if you're listening still, you can call back any night of the week. We're on seven nights live here on Free Talk Live. Yeah, th- there are major denominations in Christianity that do not believe in hell. Uh, They believe that, and they also don't believe that you instantly go to heaven or hell once you die. Uh, Well, it has to be judgment day, right? Yeah, but that's that's, right. But that's the logical loop is that if there's a judgment day, why would you instantly go to heaven or hell after you die when judgment day is actually at the second coming of Christ? Like, so you're going to get judged twice? I I think that you're supposed to sort of sleep in the ground and then rise up for... Yeah, Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 actually says that you do, the, the dead know nothing. Uh, it says they know nothing and they have no part in what happens under the sun. And this is no uh, ghosts. Was, yeah, no, right. There's no. The Bible says. I mean, now there's there's funny parts of that where you have like the witch of Endor, where uh, the, the the ghost of Samuel apparently comes up or something. But I mean, certainly the Bible does say there's people who who are in heaven right now. Uh, Elijah, Enoch, Moses. Uh, you know, there, there's a few. But uh, you know, Stay definitely for Brian's sermon. No, podcast. no, it's true. Now, I mean, the biggest case you have for hell being in the Bible is. Uh, is the bosom uh, uh, of Abraham or this, the the parable of Lazarus? But that's the thing; it's it's mixed in it's mixed in a bunch of in the, I think it's in the book of Luke uh, of a bunch of parables that Jesus is telling. And parables are not literal stories; they're parables and they're, they're examples. Well, they also okay. never give what um, the rich man was supposed to have done, other than sort of being right, rich, because it's just an example of, of of you know it's just a story. And so when when Jesus is telling these things, and and it's funny because you know every other story he tells on each side of the parable of Lazarus, you know that it's not that they're not true. But then suddenly, oh, this one smack dab in the middle. No, yeah, that one's true. Uh, no, 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 it, it, it's not. And then there's people who say, like, the word eternal gets used quite a few times in the Bible, and plenty of times it is clearly in reference to things that cannot be eternal, like like talking about uh, the, the fall of, uh, you know, of... Um, uh, various various cities or whatever that the smoke from it will will rise eternally. No, there is no actual smoke that's just going eternally. So sometimes the word eternal really does not mean eternal in uh, you know in in the Bible. Very interesting, Brian. Your knowledge is encyclopedic here. <laughs> we've got one more call to get to. Looks like we've got James in Arizona. Hey, James, you're on Free Talk Live. It's your archive. Yaakov, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? And why doesn't Mark yes. a devastating critique of Paul's in, in a devastating critique of Christianity? How come you don't read the Bible passage in Aramaic in the entirety? Why do you only choose one word? I never learned it in Aramaic, and I don't think that I have to learn Aramaic in well, order, in order to have eternal Yeshua. life. What's that? You stress Yeshua. See, I don't read it in Aramaic either. I only know people... Uh, in seminary and in the university that read Aramaic. Yeah, but it doesn't, so the, it my English point doesn't have anything to do with the original Aramaic. It has well, to do with the... Well, point's not very devastating, is my point. Well, uh, look, look point's yeah, my point is really, really is prescient. Point. And the point is, is I that it doesn't too, matter what you think about my point, James. What matters it is does, what I I'm, think about my point. What matters is the truth. What matters is nobody that worth their, uh, has an IQ over zero that is a serious theological person would think that your critique of Christianity is devastating because we don't call uh, our Lord Yeshua. We call him Jesus. It says, believe in my name and you shall be saved. I know. That's I really, that. really clear. And if the name isn't right... Aramaic, and then I'll take you serious. Say it all in Aramaic, I don't have to read anything. You what your opinion is doesn't <laughs> anyway, matter. I, I my question to you is, is your God a no, fair... James, way, let Mark respond. You don't get to change your God the subject. Is your God a fair and thing. just he God? The word and he gets the last word, Stephanie, and he keeps on repeating himself. I don't consider his... He hasn't had a chance to respond. Mark, if you have more, he's never, He's never answered my uh, yeah, question. Really? What's the question? Is Go God a fair and just God that's going to send me to hell for not believing this story? I never said he did. The, the, I never uh, said he did. Can you answer? That, Could you say one way or the other? I, mean. I never said that you're going to hell because of that sentence and you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I don't ever speak like that. Could, I'm not could you? Nor do any Roman Catholic speak like that. But your, your devastating critique of Paul's argument 